to welcome the world to Whistler. Hello, France, New Zealand. What's going on, USA, Poland, Belgium, Sweden, Czech Republic, and hello to you, Canada. On Red Bull TV, this is your Red Bull Joyride, part of the Crankworks World Tour stop number three. That's the final stop, and I'm joined by free ride legend himself, Cam McCall. Cam, how you doing? I'm psyched, Brad. How could you not be psyched? There's no place I'd rather be right now. Today's the epitome of the sport after some anticipation. We got a rain delay yesterday, but it's Super Bowl Sunday today. Pretty fitting. Sunday, Sunday. All right, well, first off, there is so much to do out here. You could go downhill riding. You could do cross-country riding. You can do slope style. But that's not all to see and do when you're hanging out here in Worcester. Check it out. Whistler Blackcomb, of course, home to the peak to peak gondola. I'm pretty sure it's the longest stretch across any two mountains that a gondola has ever been built across. It's truly amazing. Take the whole family up there. If you wait in line long enough, you can get the gondola with the glass bottom. I know my daughter was laying on that thing just going, wow, it's a pretty cool experience. <laughs> did you see the look on the lady's face there? I, I did. I don't know how you're not happy about being on that chair, but I have a feeling maybe that camera being pointed at her face, she's like, I didn't sign up for this. I don't know. It's pretty high up. All right. Well, coming up, you got Brandon Seminick going for number seven as far as podiums go and going for number four as far as wins go Enjoy right. So there's all types of numbers being thrown around out here. And speaking of numbers, there's a very special number that we're talking about. And for more on that, let's send it down. Third member of our team, Tina Dixon, with more on that special number. Tina? Right now, I'm standing about midway on this course, and as I'm looking around, there are 13 trickable features. That is the most we have ever seen at a Crankworks, and it's not just the number that is impressive. It's also the size of the jumps that have people talking. Now, keep in mind, we did have a lot of rain earlier, and in a way, it changes the consistency of the sand. So these riders may have to adjust their speeds throughout the day, and that's just an extra element for these guys to think about. Now, there has been so much talk about Brett and Brandon and I spoke to Brett after he won late as Alp and asked him what he was going to do between then and now and he said I'm going to go home I'm going to train I'm going to practice there is a lot of pressure on his shoulders especially with that triple crown at stake but guys it is anyone's game today and it is going to come down to who can trick all 13 of these features the best guys and Tina breaking down that special number. We talk a lot about the numbers, and of course, this being the third stop on the Crankworks World Tour, there's a lot of numbers there. But can you explain, Cam, about the World Tour and how it breaks down? Yeah, the Triple Crown, this is the first year that it's been offered up, and it's an amazing thing to have, you know? Horses, they do it. You watch Brett Reed a ride, he's got a lot of horsepower. So it's been 40 some odd years until American Farrell rolled in this year and won the Triple Crown of Horse Racing. Can Brett Reeder do it? He's won the first two. Super hard to win two. Can he win three and make history? I can't wait to find out. I like how you just quoted the horse's name. That is pretty cool <laughs> stuff right there. He's going to be the Canadian Pharaoh. All right. All right. So everyone keeps talking about Reeder, and there is a whole bunch of pressure because he's won the first two events. And if he wins this one, he does complete the Triple Crown. So that's what it's all about. But Cam, explain to me. It's like Reeder versus the world, right? Well, you said it, Brad. Brett Reeder, the guy who started out this season saying he just wanted to stop somebody from winning that Triple Crown. Well, he got things off to a great start down in New Zealand. Rotorua, of course, was ridiculous, and Brett threw down an insane run, putting him on the top step of the podium, and one under his belt, one step closer to the Triple Crown. Second step was out in France, Les Deux out. Once again, it was another case of Brett Reeder dominating the competition, moving into the top step of the podium, and another step closer to that ridiculous prize. And here we are, it's the last opportunity for somebody to stop him. Can he do it? He's never won Joyride before. A guy who's won it three times, Brandon Semenuk, obviously looking for that three-peat and being the first ever to do it four times. Thomas Janon, he did it in 2012. Can he rain on Brett Reeder's parade? Nikolai Rogatkin, can he put together his run? He had problems last year. And then the list goes on. Sam Pilgrim, Yannick Grenieri, Sam Reynolds, so many of the world's top slope style athletes, all gunning for one man, Brett Reeder. Definitely the pressure on Reader. Can he deliver? We're going to find out more about that. But for you slope style aficionados, there's so many different tricks to break down on here. But there's one that we decided would be kind of fun to break down. And Cam, can you explain to us and the people watching at home about the bar spin, man? 
Yeah, Brad, for sure. Something to watch out for here today is definitely bar spin. Such an important trick because it can be performed on even the smallest obstacles. One of the techniques you see of the bar spin is walking it all the way around with one hand and then catching it with the other. We call that a bus driver. You see Nikolai Rogakin showing you right there on the snail berm. Also, it's important because you can do it opposite. You see Brandon Semenuk right here doing a different technique with the opposite bars when he's throwing it. So he's pinching with his knees, he's chucking the bars, catching it with the other hand. So there's a period of time there where he's not even holding onto the bar. It's an important trick because he can be thrown into variations. Right here we're seeing Brett Reeder performing the bar spin in a truck driver. That's a term we like to use for a 360 with a bar spin. And then if you want to get ultra styly like Anthony Missouri here, we're seeing him do it in a court flat spin 360. So look for those bar spins out there today. Nice, look at the big brain on cam breaking down the whole bar spin deal there. All right, time for one of my favorites called In, Out, and On the Bubble. Okay, Cam, first off, what is in today? All right, I like this game, Brad. So in today is the magic number three. Three is a sp special number today for a couple reasons. Brandon Semenik has the opportunity to make it a true three-peat. He's won it three times already, but never in a row. So if he wins here today, after winning 2013, 2014, he can make it a three-peat. Of course, Brett Reeder, we've been talking about it so much, the triple crown. He's won the first two events this year. So if he wins this one, true triple crown, first time it'll ever be done. All right, then what's out, Cam? Out, unfortunately, is Anton Thielander. After a huge fourth place in 2013, we didn't see him last year. We're not seeing him again this year. He broke his collarbone last practice run yesterday. All right, so my favorite is, and on the bubble. What's on the bubble? On the bubble is definitely math. Nobody likes math, so why would you have to do it in slope style? <laughs> well, if you don't have a detangler on your bike, you're counting bar spins, counting tail ups, trying to figure out how many times you have to wrap that cable around your handlebars. So math, you don't like it, so you get a detangler, a mechanical one, a hydraulic one, uh, about 50% of the field running those out here today. All right, if you're coming out to a slope style competition for the first time, or maybe you're an old dog and you've been out to many slope style competitions, you still want to know what the format is. And I got the guy for the job right now. Cam McCall, can you break down the format? Yes, side? Brad. So they're running traditional mountain bike slope style competition format out here today. There's 18 riders. They get two runs. The best run counts. And at the second run, they re-rack them based on the results from the first round. So lowest score dropping first, highest score dropping last. It really builds the drama as you get to those last few riders. Well, in a perfect world, we'd like to land that your first run. That's what you want to do. But we'll see how it plays out. Well, for more, let's check in right now with the fourth member of our team. It's Hannah Bernard. Hannah? Well, thanks very much, guys. Yes, obviously talking about the rain showers yesterday, having to postpone the event till today. But one guy that is very happy about the postponing is Brandon Semenuk. Now, what we saw yesterday is he took a hard landing off of the Kokanee Whaler in practice, in his practice run. And as you can see here, he actually cracked his back wheel. So now with this extra night, he's been able to get dialed in on the setup side of things and the mental side. So we have a level playing ground going into Red Bull Joyride 20. 15 as these guys get ready for their chance at glory guys back up to you all right thank you so much hannah bernard breaking that down and, and did you see that happen or did we see the aftermath of that i caught the tail end of it i saw him land sideways and i saw the wheel blow up and i couldn't tell who it was and then when i saw him walking around down there in the corral and oh my gosh it's brandon holy cow it's crazy uh, so brandon having a little bit of trouble right there but you know having a day off to kind of fix things and make sure your bike is in tip-top condition that's okay I think it's going to be really good for everybody. The nerves build so much leading up to Saturday's final, and it was supposed to happen kind of the end of the afternoon. Yeah. Starting out first thing on a beautiful morning like today, I think it's perfect for everybody. All right. Well, Brett Reeder, of course, uh, yesterday not feeling quite so good and uh, had a chance to catch up and talk about the postponement of Joyride. So take a look at this, what Brett Reeder had to say. It's clearly too wet. The wood's soaked. It's actually muddy right now, so uh, we, we can't ride. Um, you know, which is which is a good thing for me because I've been sick all day. I woke up this morning just hovering the toilet, uh, you know, until I forced myself to do a couple of runs, and I'm not ready to do a final today, anyways. So uh, I. I'm very satisfied and happy right now for for this to happen tomorrow. If I had to do a run today, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be my best. So, uh, yeah, I I can't wait for tomorrow. 
Uh, I'll tell you right now, a adversity is what I call that right now. And you think about what he has dealt with, and you think about the stop number one in Rotorua. He was not feeling good at that one either, and he was able to come back and win. And yesterday, not feeling good. So showing you what he has done by not feeling good, Reader's been on point. Exactly. What does that foreshadow? Like you said, in New Zealand, he was feeling really sick. It rained, and then he ended up winning. So it's a great thing for him to have a little bit more time to heal up and feel better. But is it, you know, history tends to repeat itself. Is this a little bit of foreshadowing for what we'll see today? <laughs> time will tell. Man, we could, uh, we could predict this all day long. But I'll tell you what, if you're watching on Red Bull TV, one of the coolest things Red Bull TV always has going on is what we call the event analyzer. It is absolutely epic because you can check out athletes. If you missed a run, maybe you had to go to the bathroom. Nature calls sometimes, and you miss something. Well, you can come back to the event analyzer, and you can watch the runs, and you can watch them down. If someone crashed and you missed that, you can find out what went wrong, why they crashed. It's almost like you're an announcer at home with this event analyzer. You got control over the thing, what you see. It's great. You can also share it with your friends, which is really cool. It gets more eyes on this show. So once again, take advantage of that Red Bull TV and check out the event analyzer. Let's talk about the start list. The first one, Torquato Testa, he came out yesterday, had a run, but then it got postponed, so he's going to get two runs today. Thank goodness. You know, starting out with Torquato Testa means we're going to get this thing off on the right foot. It's going to start with a bang. He's an Italian rider out here in his first trip to North America, definitely ready to make waves. And look at all those French flags in there. Yannick, you got Thomas Lemoyne, and then you got Louis Rabot. Yeah, the French riders are coming out strong. They all had really good showings in Les Deux Alpes, but can they do it off of their home turf here? in uh, Whistler. Yeah, that's one thing. You know what? This isn't your country, but it's kind of close. I mean, all right, let's look at the rest of these guys. Reader, Salmonuk, Tommy G, Nikolai, Anthony, Logan. Wow. That's just a page full of consistency oh right there. Goodness. Looking at Logan Pete, he's fourth in the overall. Wow. FMB right now, all the way down to Brett and Brandon. Like, it's just a stacked field. Oh, look, he's got a smile today. I like to see this out of him right now. This is deja vu. <laughs> now, remember last, last uh, yesterday when he took his first run, his, he looked like a deer in headlights right there. Today, he looks like he's a lot more focused. He earned his spot, a second-place finish in Colorado a few weeks ago. That got him in the big show, and here he comes from Italy, doing it for Beto Bikes. It's Torquato Testa. So excited to see him get a second chance. It's not often you get a second chance your first time dropping into this course. There we go. He's starting out like he did yesterday, that flat drop backflip, going again with that double tail up off the up box, slipping oh. pedals. Can he oh. hold it? He does make it over that third feature, that step up jump. Obviously, that's going to hurt him, but he's still on his bike, which is great. Out of the shark fin, no trick. Tuck no hander on the first jump in the four pack. What's it going to be on the second one? Going backflip, tuck no hander on the second jump in the four pack. He's got a minute to regroup here before going off this cannon. Backflip, tuck no hander on the cannon. Nice. That's something we have not seen yet in a slope style competition. Seat grab, Indian air on the hip. He's definitely rebounding from that small mistake before. Opposite 360 going up on top of the Joyride Cabin. Regular 360 down. He's definitely bounced back now. He's in the snail berm. One more feature left. The whale tail. Tuck no hander in. Backflip, no footed can out. Straight to battles. <laughs> now it's a situation. Now look, Torquato, we saw that run. It's good solid run. He did have that foot dab in there, but he got more practice on the course. It's not going to be the biggest score that he's looking for, but still, there's room for improvement, and he can get his confidence built from that. Well, like we were saying, you don't really get a second chance of your first time dropping into this joyride event, but he did, and he did do a better run than he had yesterday because he didn't have to stop. So this double tail up right here is where it all went wrong. Slightly missing the pedals. But his recovery is something that I find really impressive. Nice. He's, he's sitting down, and then he gets back on and somehow pushes through. So we'll wait for that score to come in from head judge Paul Rock and the crew up there doing an amazing job as they do year in and year out. So the score coming in, that's going to be a 52. Hey, not bad for having that foot dab in there, missing his pedal, still getting a 52. Good well, stuff. Well, I think he had a 19 yesterday, so he'll take that okay, 52. And don't forget, he still has another opportunity to better that score in the second runs. So last, yesterday, if you remember, Tom Van Steenbergen was just about ready to go. This is what happened. He was ready to go, and then the rain started falling, so it was right before his run. But today, not the case. We got the good weather. And talking to Tom Van Steenbergen earlier, he's ready to go right now, and he's been doing some solid stuff this year. Fifth at 26 tricks, fifth at Silver Style. Did it for Trek C3 from Canada. It's Steesberger, Tom Van Steenbergen. Tom is one of my favorite riders. He's been trying to get into this contest for years. So good to see him here dropping in. Starting out with a 360 off the start drop. Moving into that up box. Oh, nice. A combination of tuck no hander to toboggan. 360 downside tail whip. Getting nice and corked out on that and going right to the pedals. Setting up on that shark fin. We're going into the four pack now. 
Backflip, tuck no hander on the first jump of the four pack, landed a little over row, but able to push oh. through and get this front flip. Oh, oh, oh. Landing perfect on that front flip. Tom's onto a good one here. Into the cannon log. Suicide no hander, now onto the hips. Oh, it's going to be tail up transfer on the hip for Tom, going from the left takeoff to the right landing. Joyride cabin, backflip up. And a front flip off! Oh my god, can you hold on? Oh, he goes down. Oh man, we haven't seen anybody try to front flip off the Joyride Cabin since it's been on the course the last few years. And we can see that he is obviously very shaken up right now. We got the uh, best medical staff out here at Crankworks. We'll tend to all of our riders' needs. So where you guys could come in right now is the positive vibes for our rider Tom Van Steenbergen going down on that one. But you see, when you have a major competition like this, Cam, you're going to go for your biggest stuff. And like you said, we hadn't seen that on the Joyride Cabin before recently. And Tom trying to land it down right there and trying to stop it. Well, Tom being one of the gutsiest riders in the field out here today, you know, it's no surprise that he's the one to try it. There's a lot of riders who are capable of front flipping off a drop, but it's so risky. You come down with so much more force out of that front flip than you would any other type of trick. And you know, I mean, first-hand experience, you've had, you've had trouble in a competition with the fronty before, too, as well, right? Yeah, so let's take a look back here. He's trying to balance out this run, going back flip on and front flip off. He gets really good snap. That's the problem. It's easy to get good snap. It's hard to open up and slow the rotation before your tires touch down to the dirt. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to stop that forward rotation. He just kept rotating after the bike hit. Yeah, your momentum is taking you forward. There we go. We see him up now, Brad. The crowd, huge round of applause for Tom Van Steenbergen. He was putting on a huge show for them, and they appreciate every minute of it. Unfortunately, yeah. he went down, but thank goodness he's back up quick. Well, and Tom's an amazing dude. He let, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Dakota Norton use his bike in the pump track, and actually Dakota ended up getting bronze on Tom's back bike. That's how it shows you this, what a giving dude he is, man, Tom Van Steenbergen. You know, the, the consequences with the front flip, it looks like he's holding his left shoulder right there, which obviously isn't ideal. I wish he would have stomped that. That would have been great to see. But luckily, you know, shoulders heal. And uh, we'll see him back on his bike soon. Yeah, we'll see if we can All take All right, we're going to get a second angle of oh. this crash, it looks like, Brad. That's going to be the angle to see it on. We're actually going to be able to see him hit the ground here. So, yeah, front tire hit just a split second right before the back tire. And, you know, being one of the guys who's the best at front flips in the world, he has the longest front flip ever on a mountain bike. Yeah, in the uh, new video that you guys are a part of, Unreal, that he does that in that one, right? Yeah, so, like, if it's hard for Tom to slow down the rotation on that thing, it just, it just goes to show how difficult it is and why maybe we haven't seen it the last couple of years that that Joyride cabinet's existed on the Joyride course. Yeah. All right, well, another guy we see Van, uh, Tom kind of making his way down. We hope he is okay. We wish him the best on that one. But another guy that was supposed to be competing out here uh, in the finals here. He wasn't able to do it. He got hurt yesterday. Unfortunately, we won't see him in there, but he gave us our GoPro course preview, courtesy of Carson Storch. Take a look. My name is Carson Storch. I'm up here in Whistler, BC at a uh, Red Bull Joyride course, and uh, I'm just going to take a quick lap through and tell you how it, how it rolls. So, dropping in. Get a nice little pump right here. Nice little pump right here. You don't have to take a crank and just drop. And just pop a little bar spin on it. Going up into this wedge. It's a nice truck driver. Oh yeah, nice and fun. This thing's just a booter, nice little stuff up. Then you kind of got to slow down, ride high. Hit this thing, landing low. Hit the next thing. Throwing a nice flip. Oh yeah. Then you kind of slow down, hit all the firm. In, pop the boner log. Okay, Hitting this hip nice and lofty. Super fun. Yeah, that's the point where you're kind of deep, kind of tight. You got to cruise up onto this, take a little crank, pop the three in the fist, come into the toilet bowl, and a hop. And then this is closed, so. And that is. Taking a look, Carson Storch right there and uh, giving us our GoPro course preview. And, man, a, a lot of high hopes for Carson Storch coming off that Max's Slope style win, the biggest win of his career. And here's a look at him right now getting uh, carted off. Oh, man, Carson, I care about this kid so much. I ride with him all the time, live in the same town as him. And 
just such a bummer to see him go down his last practice run, doing something that he had been doing all week. And you saw from that course preview, he's so casual, just truck driving and just telling us stories. Too bad he had to go down. Well, we'll wish him the best on a speedy recovery. Next up for you, how about this man right here? A good friend of yours, Cam. Your 2009 Joyride champion. And he's been uh, doing some things in a big way, doing it for Mongoose, 11th in Swatch Prime Line. And ended up 12th in Colorado, the Maxis Slope style final. And here he is right now. When you are a former Joyride winner, all eyes on you. And here we go. For the U.S., this is Greg Watts. Like you said, Brad, Greg has won this before. He's got one of those Super Bowl crankworks rings, so he's tasted blood. He wants it again. Greg starting out, 360 off the start drop, into the up box with a Superman seat grab. Cool, different trick. We don't see super often on that. 360 suicide no-hander at the last second on that step up. So far, he's tricking everything. A straighter out of that shark fin, but a backflip suicide no-hander on the first jump of the four-pack. Can he link it to something else? A backflip, bar spin to bar oh. spin back, it looked like. We'll have to consult the replay for that. But moving into the cannon, another stretch suicide no-hander. And a backflip X up on the hip. Here we go. We got the last two features here. We got the joyride cannon. Backflip up. 360 X up down. Changing direction now in the snail berm. And doing it for the crowd here on the whale tail. Bar spin in and a backflip out. Solid run top to bottom for Greg Watts. You know what? That's good strategy right there. Greg Watts just wanted to get one under his belt, get a solid run in, and then maybe take chances and see where you play with the rest of the riders because you'll have a second run coming up. But we'll see what the score is for Greg Watts. But put your hands together for Mr. Greg Watts, a former Red Bull Joyride champ here back in 2009. All right, we're going to go to the replay here. We're looking at the four pack. He had the backflip suicide on the first jump. And then here, this is where I really want to pay attention to see exactly what he did. Backflip bar spin to bar spin back. He's spinning the bars both ways in that backflip. Such a technical maneuver. Well, you talked about bar spins earlier, and it was like a bar spin on demand from Greg Watts for you. Yeah, we definitely didn't think about talking about backflip bar spin to bar <laughs> spin back because you don't see it very often, but there it was. All right, score coming in for Mr. Greg Watts. What's that going to be doing? Trying to beat that 52. He does that. The new leader, he's got a 68.6. That's some good stuff out of Greg Watts with that 68.60. Well, there we go. Greg Watts has put in uh, his first run of the day. So we have seen Torquato Testa come down. We see Tom Van Zebrin come down and go down and have an injury there. And then we see Greg Watts. So we've seen three riders so far. But next up for us, we got Medigani now. Oh, man, we're into it, Brad. They're dropping. I don't see any clouds now. It's great to finally get this thing underway. So Medigani fourth at uh, Vienna Air King, seventh in France, eighth white style. Here we go. Medigani right here from France. Medigani starting things off with a flat drop oh. flip for himself as well. So smooth. Truck driver, a 360 bar spin off of that up box. Boosted front flip wow. on that step up. Man, he's tricking absolutely everything. Into the shark fin. Carrying speed. Now we're into the four pack. A back flip bar spin. What's he got on the second jump? Bar spin to tuck no hander, getting the combo. Well balanced run here. Into the canny. Cannon. Medigani. Another backflip onto that cannon. So hard to rotate off that flat, no transition takeoff. Looked like he was transferring that hip flip right there. Onto the cannon. Bar spin up. And a 360 down. He's into the snail burn. We've got one more feature for the crowd here. The whale tail. Another backflip smooth out of that whale tail, top to bottom for Medigani. Man, he packed a lot into that. I think I saw him smiling about mid-run when they took a camera shot of him. He was enjoying that run 100%. That's because he's so happy to finally be here. For so many years, he's been trying to build those points up. But little things would happen, injuries and whatnot, and he's finally here at Joyride. No better feeling than putting your run down, sitting in that finish crowd, just celebrating. Yeah, what, what is that like when you get that on the first run? and you get down there. You're feeling good, right? Well, it's like the exact opposite. When people go out, drink, and have a good time. They feel hungover the next day. You feel scared at the top. You get down, you feel great. Starting out with that backflip off nice. the flat drop. Man, that, we're seeing a lot of riders do that. It was such a rare thing for the last few years. It's so difficult to rotate without any lip, but he's learned it. He's coming out, showing that the French riders have the new tricks off the drops as well. He was well. going for that tuck no hander into the whale tail. Wasn't able to get the hands off, but he had a smooth flip out. And just, you know, put a nice staple on that run, and he'll be at back up there for the second run. All right, so we'll wait for that 
Score to come in for him, and that's going to check in. Does he take Watts down on that one? No, he's going to end up in that second spot, a 62-6 for Medigani right there, finding himself in that second spot. All right, so checking the scores right now. Greg Watts, 68.6, has him in the lead. Medigani now in that second spot, the 62-6. Tor oh. Torquato with the 52, but look, we got Cam Zink. And Cam Zink is a member of the two-timer club, and that means he has won it twice. You look back to 2006, that was his first big win on the Red Bull Joyride. And then he did it again in 2010. So he's been on fire. Don't forget his second-place finish at Rampage last year. I mean, what's not to say about Cam Zink? He's such a legend in the sport. Every time he drops into a contest run, everybody's just wondering, what is he going to try this time? Uh, here we go. Next up from the U.S., put your hands together for Cam Zink. All right, Cam Zink rolling into this start drop feature. I have a feeling what he might have. Yep, starting out with that flat drop back foot, making it look so easy. Landed right on the landing. He went overshoot last year, but he's got this. Ooh, backflip, one-footed X up to Knack Knack. He calls that the chicken wing on that third jump. Getting the one-footed X up out of the shark fin as well. Backflip, Superman C grab. Oh, whoa. Oh, that hurts. Oh, man, so glad he didn't get pinched the flat right there. He came up slightly short on that backflip, Superman C grab. Really good extension, but just slightly short on that landing. And, I mean, he made that a lot better than it could have been. But he looked like he was having a solid run from the top to the bottom. He was working on what he wanted to do, and everything was kind of coming together. But when you have 13 trickable features, Cam, it's not easy to put them all together in one run. Yeah, I think that was starting out exactly how he wanted. Unfortunately, it finished exactly how his first run started last year. He had that backflip Superman seat grab on that same jump last year, but had a, had a little bit of a mishap as well. He's going to do this one for the crowd here, get to the bottom of the finish corral, regroup, and we'll see him back up the top for round two. There we go. Cam Zink spinning off the cabin just for fun and for the crowd. He knows this is a throwaway score. But he's also such a showman. So having Cam Zink out here yet again putting on a show is amazing. Can't wait to see his second run. Uh, you got to, and it's one of those things, right? You don't, it doesn't come together on your first run. You just kind of, kind of wash that away and, and focus on one more run, Cam? Yeah, well, being a guy with so much experience here, he knows he's got his head in the right place. And there he is right there, Cam Zink finishing off run number one. He'll have another one. Let's take a look at these replays here, Cam. Here we go. Everything was going good. Great extension on the backflip Superman seat grab, but look at that. Feet off, oh. rear wheel oh. behind the top of the landing. And thank goodness he was able to get his butt back to that seat instead of getting pitched to flat. Oh, oh a double All Superman. Right. All right, let's check in. Let's check in with uh, Tina Dixon, third member of our team, standing by with Cam. Tina? And Cam, you have so much experience here. You've won here twice. So how do you put that fall out of your head and head up to do the second run? I don't know. It's uh, brutal. Landed that so many times in practice. And same thing I messed up on last year. It's kind of heartbreaking. But uh, I know I can do it. It's just a matter of putting it together. All right. Well, you have another run. Best of luck, guys. Yeah, Cam Zink right there. I tell you what, you can see obviously a little bit frustrated right there, and for good reason. It got him last year. It gets him on the first round. But Cam's a professional. He'll go back up there. He could shake that off and come down and stomp that second run, Cam. And you hear him say he did it in practice. I know he's a guy who likes to get every single thing that he wants to do out of the way in practice. And he has all the confidence in the world knowing that he's done it before. He can do it again. It's just a matter of, you know, when they say go, it's hard to link them all together. Yeah, and one thing, too, I mean, you're a guy who's won it twice, so big stuff out of him, and he'll have one more shot to put it together again. Well, next up, you got to like what he's been having an amazing year. Paul Genovese, right now, he's ranked in the top ten for your FMB Diamond Series. He's in seventh place, so he's in striking distance. Did some solid stuff at SWAT's prime line, got sixth place. Then it was 11th in Rotorua and 12th in France. So he's been on kind of the outside of the top 10 on those, but he's been in the top 10 on some other events. And seventh in the FMB Diamond Series, that is no slouch. And here we go. He's ready to do it right now, doing it for Cro-Mag. From Canada, let's hear it for Paul Genovese. Paul Genovese's lifestyle right now, massively conducive to doing well, living with Brandon Semenek, Logan Pete. What does he have for us? Starting out with a truck driver off the start drop, rolling into the up box. It's going to be a Superman seat grab. So much extension. Backflip bar spin on that third feature, that step up. Shark fin, he's got that nice one-footed downside table. Backflip tuck no-hander, first jump of the four-pack. Into the second jump, 
He's got a tuck no hander. Looks like he wanted a combo, but he regrouped, got back to those bars. On the cannon log, Paul Genovese. Tuck no hander to suicide no hander. Nice. Awesome combination. Flipping that hip, landing low, but so smooth. Such great composure out of this kid. Bar spin on top of the cabin. We're going tail whip down, making it look so easy. A little bit of style into that snail berm. Now we're into the whale tail. Paul Genovese, tuck no hander in. And tail whip down smooth. Yes! <laughs> nice run in the back for Paul. Paul Genovese looking to uh, get a solid one under his belt, and that should ha happen right there for him as we'll wait for that score to come in. Uh, Greg Watts is the score to beat right now with the 68-6. Medigani another score in the 60s with that 62.6. So Genovese putting down a solid run. We'll see what the judges think, yeah. And just the, the composure of this run, we're going to take a look at the replay again. And keep in mind, he rides and trains with Logan Pete and Brandon Semenuk. So watch how smooth his landings are, how calm he is coming into these features. Right here, something we don't see very often, a tuck no-hander to suicide no-hander on a cannon log nonetheless. Yeah, you need the combos, that's for sure. And he had this tail up here to finish things off. And look, watch him land. No head bob, so quiet on the bike. That's the composure you get from riding with his buddies. So what is the score for Paul Genovese? Can he take over and get up there in the top? Score coming in, 58-8, third place for Paul Genovese with one more in the tank for Paul. Great run for Paul. You can see that the judges are definitely rewarding those unique combos from Greg Watts. So let's take a look at kind of what's been going on so far. Your leaderboard, there you go. Watts on top, 68-6, a former champ. Kind of in that uh, second spot. Genovese now just finding his way to third. That's the in that fourth spot. And then Van Steenberg and then fifth. We're not sure if he'll be going another run. And then Cam Zink. Fell on that first run, but he's going to look to try and put things together on a second and final run. All right, let's take our attention back up top for our next competitor who's locked and loaded right now. Uh, fifth place last year, just barely missing the podium. A good finish out in Rotorua, a top 10 for him out there. And 13th in France. He is out of France. Jennifer Scott next up. Put your hands together for Louis Rabot. All right, we got Louis Rabot making his way to that start drop. He's been looking really good in practice. Going with the tail whip off the start drop. We haven't seen that nice. in a run yet today. Oh, it looks like he needed something there. Yeah, he missed a trick, Brad. But he's oh, oh rebounding oh. with that really quirked out 360 tail whip. Landing a little sketchy, but definitely holding on to it. Classic Louis Rabot under flip, flat spin on that thing. Oh, the oh. cannonball. Taking both feet off, putting both hands on the seat, and then getting the tuck no hander after it. Oh, he's gonna flip that cannon. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. Flipping the cannon, going long, holding on. He's got the tail up on the hip. Brad, let's check out this cabin. Ooh, opposite 360 oh. up, dabbing a foot, but carrying speed, getting the tabletop off. Smooth through the snail. All right, last one for him. Tuck no hander in, and a backflip tabletop out. All right, Cam, i got to ask you a question. I mean, these riders were riding early today because of the postponement from yesterday. Is that something that's it's tough to deal with? Because these guys aren't used to coming out and have to compete at 10.30 in the morning. I mean, that's great for Europe. We get that. But over here in Whistler, not so great. Yeah, it's true. I feel like it, it could also be looked at as a good thing as well. Having it in the afternoon, they've got so much time to think about it throughout the day. But they just get up and drop into their slope style runs here in the morning. So let's take a look at the replays here. Uh, Louis Rabot tried to put down a solid run. I love his style on that 360 tail. Everything was looking good until he came up a little bit short. And he was also getting bucked forward like we saw Zink do, but he recovered nicely and continued on his run. So we saw him miss a trick. We saw him get that foot dab on top of the cabin. So those two things will definitely probably cost him when it comes to the score. All right, let's see that score. Let's see where he factors in. Does he get up in the mix? I got to think the judges are going to be conservative on that. Yeah, 46-2. Louis Rabot is going to find himself in a top five spot right there. And that's where he ended up last year. He ended up, after all, was said and done in the top five. But I know if you know Louis Rabot like you do, you know he's going for the top three. Yeah, he's comfy in that fifth spot. But if he wants to stay there, he's going to have to up it in that second run. Great one right there, but lots of room to just kind of iron out the kinks. All right, well. Massive crowds on hand. Hey, you know what? They had to wait an extra day, but they showed up. They got their sleep on, and they are here to make things happen. All right. Well, you got to like Thomas Lemoy, man. He is always he's always doing something really fun, and that's what the pants-wise. You look at the leopard print here. You look at the zebra print over there. You, you have preferences on these, Cam? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I like the zebra personally, and I was hoping he was going to move it forward, get the dairy cow going this year, but... Well, today he's kind of mixed up. He kind of went for this uh, 
kind of dead type thing here, right? Sapped and bleach reminds me of a Nirvana lyric. Uh, is that what it is? Okay, I don't know. I was thinking more like fish or something like that, but that's fine. So he's going to come on down. He's mixed it up. And he is ready to go. I'm Wesley Moyne, and he has been a busy man competing in so many different events. And here he is, yet another event for him in slope style, trying to get up there and to make a charge at the king of crankworks. But here he comes right now, Thomas Moyne from France. You said it. He's been a busy man, but this is really where he has his sights set. Joyride slope style course. 360 off this start drop. Going for 360 table on that Gets up it. box. Whoa, backflip tail up on the third oh. feature there. That step up. And that just gets away from him a little bit there. Oh, we saw him bar spin out of that shark fin. Oh, man, 360 tuck, no hander on that first jump. Backflip bar spin on the second jump. Puts it down. All right, now we're coming into the cannon. Tuck, no hander to yeah. bar spin on the cannon. Man, we're seeing combos on this thing this year. Nice corked out transferring flip on that hip. Okay, now in. All right, oh, it's going cannonball up the cabin. Super creative, 360 yes. X up down. X right. up in that snail burn. What do we got, Brad? One more to go on the whale tail. Tuck no hander in and truck driver down. Nice, puts it down. Such a smooth run with all kinds of different tricks. Great variety in that run for Thomas Lemoyne. Thomas Lemoyne doing what he needed to do, put down a run. And plus he's rocking those cool pants right there too as well. It's the tie-dye version this year. The whole pants thing seems to work for him. <laughs> yeah, I think next year there's going to be a triple crown of pants is what we're going to do next year. <laughs> winner. He'll be the winner. Yeah, he will win that one hands down. There we go. Best pants in the game. All right, let's take a look at some of the replays here. So we're picking him up here on that third feature, that step-up jump. Really cool style on that flip whip. Just kind of That's missing the, the pedals a little yeah. bit, but his recovery was great. We saw a combo here, Brad. Tuck no hand at a bar spin. On that cannon. Tough feature to trick, and doing a combo on that thing definitely is what the judges are looking for. But look, that's a good run. That's going to challenge the top spot no matter what. Score coming in. Thomas Lemoyne waiting for it. Is enough to take the lead. He's trying to beat a 68-6. Oh, he'll go past that one. Wow. 81.2, your new leader, Thomas Lemoyne. And he is stoked on that one, Cam. Man, not only did he exceed Greg's score, he went quite a ways above it there with that 81. And that's the feel-good thing, right? When you have that first run, it's a two-run format. You're only getting two. And you post something in the 80s on your first run, that's got to feel good. That's what you want. You know, you want some sort of safety net. Now you can kind of throw a caution in the wind and get something that second run that maybe you were kind of tentative to try on the first run. So an 81 just gives him more chances. There's the fans filing in here. I was wondering how the crowd was going to be out here today, but they have shown up in full force. There's a look at your standings right there. Lemoyne on top, 81.2 watts in that second spot. Medigani number three and Genovese in that four. So let's take all of our attention back up top, and let's do this again. Next up for you, doing it for Polygon out of Great Britain. Eighth at the FMB, he's eighth in the FMB Diamond Series all total right now. So he's in the top 10. But he's had some good finishes too as well. A fourth place at 26 tricks, a sixth place in Rotorua, a ninth place in France. So he has been on fire. And here he comes right now from Great Britain. Put your hands together for Sam Reynolds. Yep, Sam Reynolds carrying a lot of momentum from a good season so far. What does he have at Joyride? 360 off the start drop. Going tail whip right to the pedals off that up box, into that step up jump with a backflip, no footed can can, scissor kicking those legs. Carrying speed off that shark tail into the first jump of the fourth pack, backflip tail nice. up. Nice. Carrying that speed. Oh, there it is. Oh. That no footed can, no hander, nothing on the bike, and the feet off to the side. Superman on that cannon. Perfect. Tricking everything, Brad. He's got the tail whip on that hip transfer. What's he got coming into this cabin? Backflip on. Oh. 360 down. Nice. And here we go. He's going to set it up for the Kokanee Whale Tail right here. Here comes Reynolds. What's he got? Tuck no hander in and a backflip tuck no hander Bam! out. Bam! Just like that. Oh, that's awfully way too quiet. Put your hands together for Sam Reynolds one more time. That is a good run. Oh, man, he's so stoked. Fist bumping right there. The crowd behind him giving him all the high fives. We said it before, but man, there's no better feeling than stomping your run and high-fiving everybody in that finish corral. Oh, yeah, that is like a, just a big relief off the top of your head. Here's a look at it right here. Oh, Love that's, that. That's the favorite part yeah. for me of that run right there. No foot it can, off to the side, no hands on the bike. 
so hard to do in a slope style run because it's one of those tricks that's not super consistent. Getting the tuck no hander in and the backflip tuck no hander out. Definitely an exclamation point to finish that run. Oh, well, the score he is trying to beat is an 81-2 for the first and a 68-6 for that second spot. Can he get up there somewhere? And he comes in trying to beat that 81-2, 74-8. Reynolds into the second spot right there. Good stuff. So that means Lemoyne on top of the 81-2. Sam Reynolds now in second with a 74.8. And Greg Watts with a 68-6 in third place. Wow, so things heating up here, Cam McCall. We just saw Sam Reynolds bust out a solid one. Thomas Lemoyne get a good one in, and Greg Watts still in the top three. Man, when I saw Sam Reynolds in the gate, I was hoping he was going to pull that trick out, that no fit can nothing. That's kind of like his signature trick right now. Nobody else really doing it in a slope-style run. Got to love it. Look at the look on Thomas Zeta right now. He is 100% focused on what the task at hand is right now. So here he comes. He got he's sixth in the FMB Diamond Series, so just out the top five. Ninth place last year. Let's see if he can improve on that. Doing it for Dartmoor. Next up for the Czech Republic, Thomas Zeta. Thomas Zeta always bringing his own style. 360 off that start drop. And a 360 tail whip off the up box. We have not seen that yet. Backflip tail up on that third jump. Here we go. We're into the shark fin. Carrying speed into that four pack. Getting a 360 on the first jump. What's There's he got on the one. second one? Going for oh. a double tail whip. So gets the double tail whip. What's he got on the cannon? Oh, 360 table. That's that classic Thomas Zeta style. Hopefully that tire's still on. Oh, man, he had an issue after landing slightly sideways with that three table off the cannon. Oh, yep. you can see it, yeah. And that's one of those situations, Cam, right? If you land straight, you land. if you land a little bit off to the side, that's going to break the bead, right? No more PSI left in that thing. He broke the bead by landing sideways. That's why you want to land straight, but, man, so much style in that run. We had the double tail up, that three table off the cannon. Too bad he had to land just a little bit too sideways. And how do you put that behind you when you have a, a, a situation like a mechanical like there in the middle of your run? How do you get that out of your head going into a second one? Well, Zeta, I mean, he rides so many contests throughout the course of one season. He's got all the experience needed to block that out and just go up there for a second run. Here, we're going to take a look back at that replay. Oh, I love the table. Don't you? It's flat. You could have a picnic on it, but unfortunately, just a little bit too sideways. When we saw him not go airborne on those hips, we knew something was up. Yeah, there's not much you can do about that one right there. So he'll look to try and put that thing together and see if he can get it all fixed in time to be able to take a second run for Thomas Zeta. There you go. You see this now more and more often. He's got a buddy out there to help him with that mechanical. It's nice to have a little tech support out there for slope style. Yeah, it's one of the situations where, you know, you got a good crew working with you. you got some people supporting you, so he'll go to the crew that he's working with and see if he can get that thing all fixed up and be ready for a second and final run coming up for Thomas Zeta. So Zeta finishing up his run right there. He'll look to a second one for him. Your top three, Watts in third, Sam Reynolds in number two. Moss Lemoyne in the number one spot, 81.2. But uh, some of the big names all coming up. And there's a big name right there, Sam Pilgrim, 25 years old, and for NS Bikes. And what do you say about Sam Pilgrim? I mean, he was your uh, FMB uh, series champ just a few years ago. So he's been on top of the, the podium before. He knows what to do. He's taking the high fives. And he looks pretty calm. We he, saw him today, but it seems like he had his game face on this morning. Yeah, either that or he was just, uh, he was already listening to his headphones. That could have been it. <laughs> now he's smiling. All right. just right. I'm trying to create some drama right there, buddy. All right. Well, next up for you, currently sitting in the fifth spot, the FMB Diamond Series, third in Joyride 2013. First of the Dirt Masters, fifth in France, and fifth in Swatch Prime Line. This is Sam Pilgrim. Sam Pilgrim start things off with a flat drop flip. First guy to ever do that a few years ago. 360 X up on that up box into the step up. Cork 720. Oh, just landing a little bit sideways. Oh, man. That was starting out real good, Brad. So and that's one of those things when you do it that early in the run, that's got to be even more. I mean, what's more frustrating, having a problem in the beginning of the run or having a problem at the end of the run? I feel like in the beginning of the run is a little bit better because you don't have all this stuff that you'd already landed, you know, and thrown it away for nothing. He had two great tricks already under his belt. He threw it away on the third one, but at least it wasn't the last feature where he's like, look how much I accomplished, and then boom, there it goes. Well, we've seen that happen. We've seen it happen to the biggest name in, in all of uh, free riding, and that's uh, Brandon Semenuk. We've seen him have trouble on that last one, and I think you're right on that. It's Seems like it's harder 
to wash that out of your head when you do it on the last the last jump or the last. Uh, yeah. Plus, left. you don't have to hike up as far if you mess up on the third feature. It looks like he's so close to the top that he's like, you know what? You know I'm what? just going to get up here, start preparing in my head for that second run. Yeah, exactly. Head right back up there, and he'll be ready to go for a second and final run for Mr. Sam Pilgrim. All right. Time to check in. Third member of our team. Let's send it downstairs to Tina Dixon. Tina? Yeah, thanks so much, Brad. Just a quick update on what happened from yesterday to this morning. For all of you that showed up bright and early, you know that the rain came and Mother Nature had her own way with this event yesterday. But 6 a.m., bright and early this morning, the course workers were up there working on the jumps, working on the berms, and they actually have these torches that they take and dry out all the wood to get to get the course nice and ready. Now, most of it was naturally dry, and practice started at 8.30, and from talking to the riders, they say it is perfect and in great condition. So let's get back to the event. Brad? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, Tina, good job down there. Hey, listen, though, these guys, the course workers and the people who do such an amazing job here at the Whistler Bike Park and, and what they have done, I mean, there was a lot of rain that fell down last night, yesterday. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of stuff you got to do to dry it out. But yeah, best uh, best guys for the job right there, the Joyride Bike Park's crew. Well, next up, the Frenchman right here, Yannick Grunieri. All game right now. Here we go. Yannick Grunieri, if you look at what he's done, seventh place last year, eighth out in France. And here we go for YT Industries and Red Bull. This is Yannick Grunieri. Yannick Grunieri has been meaning business this year. Coming out with that chest protector right now. 360 off the start drop to start things off here. Tail up off that up box. He's got good speed in the step up. What's it going to be? Cork 720. And oh. he lands it perfect. Oh. oh, man. He's off to a great start here. Now we're into the four pack. Backflip, tail whip. Perfect landing. Carrying speed, grabbing a pedal. Backflip, seat grab, Indian air. Wow. No way. I have not seen him do that yet. Off the cannon, getting that tuck no hander. Oh, classic Yannick Grenieri style with a flat spin X up on that hip. Into the joyride cabin, backflip up top, and a tail up down. Nice. And he's got one more to go, the kokanee whale tail. Here comes Yannick Renary. What's he got here on the final jump? Bar spin in, and a truck driver down because he got oh, the bars. Oh, oh. Oh, man. We talked about bar spins earlier. Fumbling with the bars on that 360 bar spin. Obviously very shaken up off that one right there. Yannick Grenieri just putting down such a solid run top to bottom and just getting a little, little over-rotated on that one. So you can see Reynolds going right up to make sure that he is okay. So definitely got a pretty good head slap out of that one. So talking Darren Kennard right there, making sure he knows he's in Whistler. All good. And seeing him wear the chest protector, we've not seen him, we've not seen him come out with a chest protector. This is the first time I've seen him wear protection like this. All right, I'll tell you what, let's look at the uh, the highs and the lows of this last run. Look at Yannick, he's okay. He's one tough customer, that's And that sure. was full circle. We were talking in Sam's run about how he threw it away on the third feature and how much better that is in your head for throwing away on the last one. And then Yannick, unfortunately, you know, let's take a look back at the highs and lows of this run. High point was obviously this Cork 720. Oh. We saw Sam mess it up, but Yannick absolutely perfect on that Cork 720. And then of course, where everything went wrong, the low point of this run right here, 360 bar spin out, fumbling the bars, almost recovering, but landing a little sideways. And thank goodness he was wearing that chest protector, full face helmet. He hit the ground pretty hard, Brad. Yeah, that was a body slap, head slap right there out of him. But Yannick, like I said, one tough dude. So he's gonna get up from that one. That score is going to be a 50.4. That'll find his way into that seventh spot right there. And if you want to know what's going on so far, your top five, Paul Genovese. Paul Genovese in that fifth spot. You got Medigani holding it down. You can see him right there in that fourth spot. Watts third, Reynolds number two, and Lemoyne on top of the game with an 81.2. And he is your leader right now as we'll take all of our attention back up top for our next competitor. And this guy can do it. Think about it last year. Barely missing the podium. Ended up in fourth place last year, but you know he's hungry for a first place finish out here. Absolutely, just continuing to build every single season. So consistent, adding new tricks to his bag every event. Well, here we go. 
Overall ranking on the FMB Diamond Series, he's in fourth. Fourth last year at Joyride. Can he get up in the top three this year? Put your hands together for Canada's very own Logan Pete. Logan Pete starting off the 360 down that start drop, moving right in the up box with an opposite 360, balancing things out. On that step up jump, a 720. Oh, look at the rotation wow. on that. Connecting perfect to that landing, getting exactly 720 degrees there. Going for backflip on that first jump. What's he got on the second one? Was that a tuck, no hand, or to tail up it looked like? Getting the combination. Judges liking to see the combos. Off the cannon, we got a 360 nice. for Logan Pete. Ooh, backflip tail oh. up on the hip. I've never seen anybody do that on that hip. Joyride cabin for Logan Pete. Backflip tuck, no hander up. Opposite 360 down. Nice. Over to the snail berm. So this is going to set him up for one more. The kokanee whale tail for Logan Pete. Look like Barsman in. Backflip, tuck, no hander out. Bam, that's what you oh. want right there. Such a good run, tricking everything. I think it was a bar spin in. It might have been a one-footed X up a min. Getting that combo out is exactly what the judges want to see. Well, and a lot of people talk about Logan Pete could definitely win this thing. It's not one of those guys where you say, oh, yeah, he's good enough. He can get up in the top five or something like that. But Logan Pete's a guy that could win this thing. It was such a balanced run, too. If you look how many times he was doing an opposite spin on some of those more difficult features and then flip whipping that hip. Such right, a good way to put together that run. Okay, I'm gonna check these replays here, Logan. So this 720 right here, so smooth. There was no herky jerkiness into the rotation, just smooth spinning, 720 yeah. degrees. This was one of my favorite points right here. It's way harder to trick a hip than it is a straight jump. He does a backflip tail up, one of the bangers. Yeah, because it's a transfer. When you're tricking a hip like that, you're transferring to a different side. It's not just a straight jump. You got to think about landing the right yeah. direction as well. It's not a straight landing. So lo Logan Pete. Well, judges uh, taking their time. And the reason the judges take their time in this, they always want to make sure. I've talked to Paul Rack about this whole thing. It's about making sure the riders get put in the right place. So does he have enough to beat the 81-2 of Thomas Lemoyne? Score coming in. Here it's going. 85, oh. your new leader, just <laughs> like that. Logan <laughs> Pete from fourth place last year to the top of the heap this year. Oh, I love the look on his face. He sees that number one by his name. He's like, all right. You can see Reynolds right there already congratulating him, saying good job there. Your top three, well, there's Reynolds right there. He's holding out. Great Britain in third. Thomas Lemoyne now bumped into second, an 81.2. And Logan Pete, <sighs> nicely done, Logan on the top spot with an 85 in that number one position right now after run number one. And I said, it's a confidence builder getting an 81 on your first run, but what, what kind of a confidence builder do you get with an 85? Oh man, we are into it now. We're seeing 80s, scores in the 80s, and it just keeps building. All right, now Anthony Bazzari coming up. We had a chance to catch up to him early, and here's what he said about focusing for a big competition like this. I'm just trying to focus on myself, you know? I just want to make myself stoked, and I think you know, that's what works best for me if I uh, just, uh, you know, have something set, goals that are realistic in my mind and, uh, you know, that I want to do. And, you know, I'm not generally thinking about all the other riders and the people watching and just do it for myself. And that tends to work. Well, I'll tell you what, it has worked for him because this guy made a name for himself out here. You look back to 2011. That's when he was just 15 years old. He came out here, he busted out, he dropped the third place finish, and then ended up last year, another third place finish. Two podiums so far, Dude, doing it for Morpheus from Canada. Let's hear it for Anthony Mazzari. Well, he's already started this run. He <laughs> no. bars went into that little down slope, into the star drop. On the star drop, it's a tail whip for Anthony Mazzari. Oh, dumped out truck driver, 360 bars went on that up box. Front flip, tuck no hander on that step up. Wow. Reminiscent of last year, he's on a tear. Bar spin out of that shark fin into the four pack. Ooh, backflip double yeah. bar spin on the first jump. Backflip tail up classic oh. Anthony Missouri style. Holding on to it, coming up slightly short. There we go, into the cannon, getting that speed. Double tail up off the cannon. Holy cow. Classic flat oh. spin. Here he comes, Anthony Missouri. Two podiums so far, joyride. Up. Backflip bar spin up. Down. 360. Nice. Over the snail berm, so this leaves him one more to go for Anthony Mazzari here. Up the whale tail. Suicide no-hander in, and a backflip tail about. Oh, oh, he fumbled. Oh, man, he was going for broke on that run. Thank goodness for full face helmets, huh?
Look at that. Yeah. If you drop if you drop an ant from a high place, he's going <laughs> to land smooth. So thank goodness, Anthony Missouri falling from a really high place, hitting the ground hard. But man, getting up so quick, what a tough dude. Yeah, 90 pounds soaking wet, Anthony Missouri. But coming out on that one, and it looks like he is okay. If anything, he's visibly shaken up after that. I love to see the crowd just get behind all the riders out here. Let's take a look at here the replays of Missouri. All right, so just like he did last year, he's hitting that step up jump with a front flip tuck no hander so high. When he does those front flips, he goes to the moon. And here's that back flip tail up down. Oh, it looks like he was just a little under on the flip rotation. The bike didn't connect with his feet in time to be able to pull around and get it to the landing. And this bike just attacking him on the way down the hill. Wow. Yeah, you got to look at it this way. I mean, obviously that score is not going to put him up in the top of the mix because you had the mistake right there. But a guy who's uh, in the number one spot is standing by with Tina Dixon right now. Let's send it downstairs to Tina. Tina. And Logan is our current leader. Logan, give us your assessment of what you were able to do on that first run. Yeah, I was pretty happy. Um, missed a few things, but uh, you got a second run. It's awesome to get at the bottom in one piece and can't wait to get up there. What was, you live with Brandon, you train with Brandon. What was it like for you guys leading up to this event? Yeah, lots of practice, you know. We knew about the course months in advance, so you can kind of plan your tricks on the features and just basically hard work. All right, well, you got another run. Best of luck, guys. Man, he kind of picks himself apart right there. I think he's pretty solid with that 85. He's like, ah, oh, there's a couple things I could do. These guys are perfectionists, Cam. Well, he rides with Brandon, the captain of all <laughs> perfectionism, and he yeah. rides with them, trains with them on the course. He, like you said, he knew the course layout ahead of time, so they've been just thinking about this moment for a long time now. So how we're looking right now, Greg Watts, number four, Sam Reynolds, number three, Thomas Lemoyne, number two, and uh, Logan Pete, uh, the number one spot. All right, coming up for you right now, Nikolai Rogatkin. First off, let me just say, it was only about two, three years ago when I first saw him in a competition. Had no idea who he was. He had won BMX Worlds, and nobody really knew anything about Nikolai Rogatkin. He's come out. He's gotten some finishes. In fact, second place in Rotorua, and he's ready to do things in a big way out here in Crankworks. Here we go. Our next rider from the U.S. Get loud and proud for Nikolai Rogatkin. Nikolai, a fast plant 360. Wow. That's a new one for him. Double tail up off the up box, man. Front flip bar spin on that step up. Nice. Man, those first three tricks are already putting him in. There we go, bar spin out of that shark fin. Cork 720 on the first jump. I have a feeling what he wants here. Oh, there it is, the oh. casserole on the second jump. Oh, those two tricks linked right back to back. You gotta be kidding me. Could this be the run that Nikolai's looking for? Oh, no. no. Oh, just judging the speed wrong in that cannon coming up short. Oh, that but, was starting out so good, Brad. Holy crap. Look at him still running. He is charged up like the Energizer bunny right there. Look at that. He fell. He hit the ground. He's immediately sprinting back to his bike. I feel like he wishes he could just go back up and start his second run right now. Well, he is such a consummate professional, and he knows what he can do. It looks like he got a flat on that. Yeah, look at the oh, tire. Oh, that's why he didn't have the speed there. No yeah. air in the tire. Yeah. Yeah, there's the thumbs down on the tire. But you know what? Nikolai Rogakin will uh, try to regroup. And uh, you, you think about that second place finish at Crankworx Rotorua. That was a big surprise out there. I mean, not to me. I, I know the guy. I know the guy could win any one of these competitions. But right now, Nikolai's going to have to focus on run number two, Cam. I can't wait to take a look back at this replay because the first few tricks were a highlight reel. This four pack, you got to be kidding me. Cork 720 landing perfect on the first one. And then I love seeing him linking it right into that casserole. Whoa. These are two tricks that are 720 degree variations right there, but he's doing them on separate axes, just showing a lot of just a, just a well-rounded gymnast, really. So his tire was already flat going up that last element right he there. He landed slightly sideways on that cash roll, and it probably leaked out in that berm and didn't have enough speed to hit that cannon. Yeah. Well, it could have been much worse for him right there, but one thing is he was on point. And you know what? Talking to him earlier today, he's focused 100% on the task at hand, and that's what he is trying to do. Well, so far, we've seen uh, pretty much most of all the riders, but there are three more riders yet to go. And this guy right here, you shared the podium with him back in 2012. That was the, that was the win that put him on the map.
Remember, he was wearing the green helmet, and now he's got the Red Bull helmet, so he has moved on up. Tommy G we're talking about. Yeah, Thomas Janon, he's the last guy not named Brandon Semina to stand on the top <laughs> seven of the podium in this contest for the last couple of years. Oh, my gosh. You are right on that one. And Tommy G is so consistent this year. <laughs> he's in second for the FMB Diamond Series, too. Well, here we go. A 2012 Joy Ride champion. Here we go from Belgium, doing it for Kenya Bikes. This is Tommy G, Thomas Janon. There we go, Thomas Janon starting out with an opposite 360 drop. A regular truck driver, 360 barsman on that up box. Cork 720 nice. on the step up. Gosh, the casual consistency of this guy is insane. Oh, Tuck tricks no, it. Tuck no hander out of that shark fin. Backflip barsman to Tuck no hander on the first jump of the four pack. Oh, there's the style. 360 ah. flat invert on that second jump there. Kind of casing that just a little bit, trying to keep Whoa. that speed. 360 Tuck no hander on the cannon. Double tail up on the oh. hip, holding things together. So up the cabin now. We got a suicide no-hander on. Down the and cabin. And a flat drop flip. Nice. That's a new one for Tommy G this year. So he's got one more to go through the snail berm, setting up for the whale tail. Tommy G. Going bar spin into the whale tail. There we go. 360. Oh, he oh. held on. Oh. Oh. That was scary oh, right there. You might you want can, to check your shorts on that one. <laughs> you can see him straighten up. He knew as soon as he took off, he was over-rotating. He opened up, tried to make himself bigger, slow the rotation, was able to hold on and roll that thing through the finish line. There's not much you can do there, but trying to slow the rotation, like you're saying, open yourself up, maybe slow that rotation down so you don't over-rotate. This board is getting more and more like gymnastics every day, and that's what they do. They try to make themselves bigger, increase the rotational inertia, slow it down, and you know he knew exactly where he was. He's got that air awareness. Yeah, let's take a look at the replays here. Tommy G going to work in his office. So much to highlight here on this replay. This Cork 720, every single oh, trick that. that Thomas Janon does is just bolts. Lands it straight, no head bob. Here it is. This is where he held on to it here on that last step down on the whale oh. tail. Yeah, you know, that was almost reminiscent of 2012 when he blew out his tire each run, but he was able to hold on to that thing and keep the PSIs in there. Why does he look so calm? Because Tommy he's Thomas Janon. <laughs> Tommy G, <laughs> the calmest, coolest dude out, man. It's the way he does it. Yeah, and uh, once again, taking that big win. Didn't know much about him back in 2012, but after he took that win, he had joyride it. All right, score coming in. Tommy G, where's he going to go? Can he get up in the top five here? Top three, what's it say? 71.8. So fourth place for Tommy G right there. All right, now we've been talking about the Triple Crown. The Triple Crown is you have to win all three stops on the Crankworks World Tour. Not just finish the best of everyone else, but win all three. And Brett Reeder has been perfect so far. He has won it in Crankworks Rotorua. He came to Crankworks France. He won that one. So it's coming up to this one. But the next guy coming up is looking to spoil the party. And if anyone can spoil the party, a three-time Joyride winner can spoil that party. Just seen Brandon Semina getting ready, getting his bike all set up in the start gate. It makes the hair, hair stand up on my arms. I get goosebumps. This is really happening, Brad. So once again, last year, if we rewind the clock to a year ago, this was the man who did what no one has ever done at Red Bull Joyride and come away with three wins. That's three wins. And not only that, he has had six podiums on Joyride. He's looking for a seventh, trying to get his fourth win. Here he comes from Squamish. Let's hear it for the local boys, Brandon Semenok. Brandon Semenok starting out opposite truck driver on the start drop. 360 downside whip off the up box. Backflip double oh. tail up on the step up. This is a Brandon Semenok trademark run right here. Bar spin out of the shark fin into the four pack. Cork 720 on the first jump, Perfect. landing so smooth. And a backflip tail up to one foot again on the second jump. Oh man, we saw that in his movie part. Oh. Backflip bar spin on the cannon, such a new move. Another one he dumped out in his movie part. Double tail whip on that hip. Okay, this se is setting up for the cabin. Cabin is gonna be, oh man. Double truck up, flat oh. drop flip down. So over to the snail berm. One more to go for Brandon Selmina. Can we hear you people? Coming in so fast, bar spin in. Cork 720 down, can he get it? He yes, lands it! Yes, he gets oh. it! <laughs> the final trick, that was the one that has been his Achilles heel in the past, but not today. Brandon Selmina coming out with a solid one right there. Oh man, if there's anything possible smoother than his run last year, it was what we just saw there.
Damn, son. Holy crap. <laughs> Things just got serious out here today. Man. All right. Look, you know what? We could just show one jump on this run, but we need to take a look at this whole entire run of Brandon Selmaduck right now. That was freaking amazing. That was a masterpiece. The same way Paul McCartney writes a beautiful song, Brandon Selmaduck composed that run right there. An opposite truck driver down, a 360 downside whip on the up box. Here was that backflip double tail. We saw him do it last year. He brings it again this year. <laughs> Oh, oh my man. God. And then you don't see a lot of people tricking the uh, shark fin. He bars from the shark fin. Of course, he corks 720 that first jump. Rolling right into this. We haven't seen this in a contest yet. Backflip, tail up to one footed can, squeezing out another trick as if a backflip tail up isn't enough. Isn't enough. Yeah, let me show you my combo. We saw the backflip bars from off the cannon in Revel in the Chaos. He's bringing it to Joyride. Double tail up on the hip. And then it was all about the cannon here. Look at this. Suicide double truck up. Just a casual flat drop flip off, looking so easy for Brandon Semenuk getting that bar spin into that snail berm. And this is the one you always want to watch him on this last feature. Look at how fast he rotated that cork 720 and how smooth he landed. That was exactly the way he pictured it in his head. That was insane. <laughs> and a double high five from the crew right there. All right. Will it be enough to beat Logan Pete's 85? Score coming in for Brandon Semenuk. Has he done it? Say hello Whoa. to your new leader at 93.8 on his first <laughs> run for Brandon Semenuk. He means business. Three wins as a joyride champ. Trying to make it four. Let's send it down to Tina Dixon with more. Tina, wow. And what a statement, Brandon, you just made with that first run. Give us your impression of it. Oh, uh, thanks. That was... Uh... I'm just so happy I made it to the bottom. I just want to run because uh, the last couple of contests have been struggling, but that was pretty good, and hopefully uh, it'll hold up, and I got another run. Pretty good. It was a 93, and you have the support of the crowd. Do you feel like you have a home turf advantage here in Whistler? Uh, I got lots of fans behind me, which is great, but besides that, I'm just doing what everyone else is doing, trying my best. Focusing on the job. Best of luck next run, guys. All right. Well, let me just throw this out right now. Okay, so we got to 93.8. Don't forget what happened last year. Now, when it came down to Brett Reeder on his first run, he posted up a 94-something right there. So he'd already beat a 93.8. So we all know Reeder could put something mid-90s, maybe even upper 90s if Reeder lands his run. We're basically seeing a mirror image of how things shook down last year. Last year, Brandon oh, wow. watched Brett's run. This year, Brett just watched Brandon's run, and now he's got to make a plan. Exactly. Turnabout is fair play, and that's exactly like Cam just said. That is what happened last year. It was Brett Reeder who came out and put down the 94, and it was then Brandon Salmanek that came out and uh, eclipsed that one. And Reeder looking for his first ever win here at Joyride here in Whistler. And also, he is absolutely perfect for the Triple Crown. He won a Crankworks Rotorua. He took another big win when he went to France for Crankworks France. Here we go. First run from Canada for Trek C3. Get loud for Brett Reeder. Brett Reeder, flat drop, one footed can flip. Oh, there it is. The opposite 360 bar spin to bar spin back and a front flip bar spin starting things off with a classic Brett Reeder style. Bar spin out of that shark fin. What's the four pack going to be? Oh, back flip. Oh, oh, going down on the flip double whip. And he took a tough one right there. Brett Reeder obviously shaking up. Man, Brett, knowing what he had to do, he's been doing that trick in practice. It is a new one for him, the backflip double tail whip. Well, now the one thing that he has done this year, he has secured the overall series for slope style at Crankworks on the World Tour. So he, he can't be beat on that one. But it's the triple crown and also the first joyride win is what he's trying to get. All right, let's take a look at the replays here, Cam. So here's where it went wrong. It was the backflip double tail whip coming up short by the front wheel and, man, taking it the whole thing to the body right there in the middle of the landing. Another angle here, Brad. Yeah, that. Yeah, to the shoulder, to the arm. I know exactly how hard the dirt is right there when you fall on that jump. What an animal getting back up and climbing up to the top of that landing right now. Giving a wave to the crowd. 
They love this guy so much, he loves them right back, and he's just doing his best to put on an amazing show for everybody out here today. Uh, you just wish the best for him. Here we go. He's going to finish things off right now. Man, I can't. Wow. I can't what? believe he's back on his bike. Flip bar in the cannon, double truck driver in the hip. Man, he fell, and I was just hoping he'd be able to do a second run. I didn't expect him to hop back on and ride down to the bottom of the course right away. And here he goes through the snail berm. Probably going to take it easy here on the whale tail here since he knows he's got one more to go here. Oh, man, bar spin to bar spin back into it. If that's any sense of what we're going to see in his second run, man, I, can, I can't even tell you how I'm excited just to see that he's still riding because, you know, we're going to see him back up there for run two. Yeah, there was one of the situations, like, when he had that crash, I was like, well, I didn't even think he was going to be able to get back up. And he got right back up, and he went down and uh, just kind of get a little more, like, almost like a little bit more practice in. Well, remember, you and I were talking to him earlier, and he said he, they have not got a lot of practice on that last whale tail. And checking the carnage right there for uh, Brett Reeder. Uh, what a solid dude, man. What an amazing season he has been having all year long. Brett Reeder will have to look to a second run for him. But like you said, Cam, didn't even think he was going to get back up, and then he decides to come back down and just kind of finish that runoff. Now we're thinking ahead. We're thinking to run two. Sometimes you have a little bit of fall. It's just all the nerves go away. You got your adrenaline going. You just feel fresh. Hopefully, by the time he gets back up there for a second run, he's just raring to go. Is it like a clean slate or something like that? You got the stack out of the way. You went down like, okay, shrug that off. I'm going to make things happen on my second run. It definitely gets the blood flowing for sure. So the 36-6, obviously, that's one he's going to want to toss away and look to improve on that. Well, let's take a look at how things are playing out here as well regarding the scores so far today. You can see Martin Soderstrom coming on in there and telling him uh, good luck on a second run. There you go. Your top five, Tommy G, number five spot. Sam Reynolds, number four. Thomas Lemoyne in that third spot. And Logan Pete right there, number two. Brandon Semenuk in the number one spot with a 93.8. And that's only run number one, Cam. We still got run number two for all the riders. And everybody knows what Brandon just showed, and they know the bar is set real high. Just that run by Brandon is such a classic Brandon run. It's When you see something like that, you got to think, how many times can the same guy blow so many minds on the same hillside? But I also wanted to say this, and I've told you this. I told you yesterday, and I told you this again today. I feel that Brandon Semenuk is very dangerous today because he has nothing to lose here. I mean, last year, all the pressure was on Brandon Semenuk. Okay, fast forward 2015, all the pressure is on Brett Reeder, not on Semenuk. He's able to kind of relax, have fun, and do his thing, and look, it puts him in the top of the 93.8. It's true. He's the only one that is so familiar with this territory, this nerve-wracking situation of Joyride, and, you know, that run just goes to show that he's comfortable here. All right, well, all right, let's talk about tricks versus style. Tricks versus style, you want to know a little bit more about that? Well, take a look at this. It's all about tricks. Versus style. Check it out. There's definitely a difference between riders that have style. Versus riders that have lots of tricks. You don't want to just be clicking the tail whip button and, you know, being a robot. What a Triple tail. I think style is something that defines someone as a rider. For slope style, it's obviously important to have style, but you need the tricks to win too. That being said, like having to train for these slope style contests, it's basically hard to ride the way that you want because it's not always that you want to like do flip double whips and flip whips and front flips all the time. You got to be fluid and consistent with your tricks, but also like give it that special touch that's kind of got like a wow factor, you know, like you want you want to do that trick and it just looks that much better than the other guy's trick. So definitely put the style on slope style. I'll tell you what, things are definitely getting crazy out here. It's a two-run format. So we've seen run number one from all the competitors. Brandon Semenuk, he's in that top spot right now. We saw the problems for Brett Reeder on that first run, but he's a guy who can definitely shake it off and get back to there and make things happen on a second run. Well, let's check in with the third member of our team. She's standing by with a very special guest. Let's set it down to Tina Dixon. Tina. And I think it says a lot about Brett Reeder, Brett, that you picked yourself up and finished your run. What were you telling yourself right after that fall? Uh, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't fallen all season, so it was about time, I guess. Um, it just sucks that it was my first uh, run at Red Bull Joyride. 
And you're coming into this event, though, after two wins. You know what it takes. You have the experience. So what's key for you as an athlete to go back up and refocus for the second run? I don't know. There's a couple spots on the course that are a little hard to judge speed. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I just got to get a little more speed out of that SRAM wall. Well, you've got one more run. Best of luck, Brett. Guys? Uh, thank you so much, Tina Dixon, with... Uh, Brett Reeder down there, and you can tell, you know, a little bummed out, but he's had such an amazing year. There's no reason he should be bummed out at all. No matter what happens here today, he can hold his head high because he's had an amazing season this year, and he's still got one more run to keep that season going. All right, well, one run in the book right now, and we've got the second run coming up, but it's time to break things down with our special halftime joyride special here. Take a look and uh, listen in. All right, so first runs in the book, and it's time for our Red Bull Joyride Halftime Show right here. Joined by T-Mac, Martin Soderstrom in the mix for you. All right, questions to you guys. First of all, T-Mac, I want to start with you right off the bat. Pressure. Some guys landed first runs. Some guys didn't land first runs. What kind of pressure are you feeling right about now? That's the Not thing. you. Oh, right now, I'm not feeling any. I'm just <laughs> have pressure, and I'm worried for my homies and hope they all make it down safe. But uh, as we saw on first runs, some are better with pressure. Some aren't as good at it, and that's where experience really comes into play. Some of the younger guys, uh, you know, there's not really any way to prep for something like this. So the guys who have ridden Red Bull Joyride before, seen this huge crowd, they're going to be a little better at handling it. But uh, sometimes the young guys surprise you and do really well under pressure. So it's kind of a hit or miss things uh, thing. Some people have it, some people don't. All right. So now, Martin, the question to you now. Back in 2013, you were sitting there in the silver medal position. You went out there. It was your second run. And uh, the unthinkable happened. You got injured out there. You still ended up in second, coming away on the podium. But how do you deal with that from first run as opposed to second run? What was going through your mind before you even took that second run? Yeah, I mean, it's the biggest event of the year. So you're obviously super pumped that you pulled the first run. But also when you pull your first run, it's like now you know that you're going to go 200% for the second run. So it's kind of scary for sure because you also know, yeah, as I experienced, it's fairly big chance that you're going to get injured. And um, yeah, it's part of the sport, I guess. And um, yeah, not much to do about it. I just hope everyone stays safe, as Team Mike said. Yeah, and, and that's the thing where you're going for it because you were, you were going for the top spot on the podium. That was no doubt about that. All right, and speaking of that, let's talk about this. I mean, you've already made a name for yourself if you're competing out here at Crankworks and Whistler, right? I mean, you've made a name for yourself or you wouldn't even be here. But yeah. it's legend status getting on the podium. We look at a guy like Cam Zink. He has won it twice. We look at Brandon, who's won it three times. Paul Bass has won it twice. But it's legend status, and you can really do some good things. So how do you deal with situations like that? You're not on the podium. It's the second run. you got to go for broke, don't you? Yeah, it's crazy uh, how much work it is for these guys to actually get in a Red Bull Joyride. We have the whole FMB World Tour ranking system for them to get points to be here. So no one got here out of luck. Everyone's worked super hard, and just being in Joyride is an accomplishment in itself. But obviously, you want to get on that podium. And if you're not on that podium, second run, you're going to try to hang it out there and get in that top three. Because, uh, yeah, getting top three at Crankworks here is kind of like putting you into a household name. And uh, you're going to be well known. You're going to be around for a long time. Um, so, yeah, I think second runs, everyone's just going to hang it out and try to get into that top three. All right, so over to you on that one, Martin. The same deal. I mean, Anthony Missouri made a name for himself. 2011, got third place. Boom, big sponsorship. Tommy G does it in 2012. He gets up there, wins it. Big sponsorship. So podium matters, doesn't it? Oh, for sure. It does matter. I mean, <laughs> I've been third and second, I think, three times. So I would <laughs> really, podium doesn't feel as big for me anymore. Yeah. I would really like that first spot. But yeah, I will uh, be back for next year and Oh, keep trying because it's actually hard to just make it to Joyride, I realized, because yeah. last year injured in kind of begin beginning of the season and this year same thing again. So, um, yeah, you have to play it smart to be here. Well, we wish you well on the recovery, too. We definitely want to see you back. And that's going to do it for our Red Bull Joyride halftime show. Big props out to T Mac, Martin Sides from holding it down for us. We got the second runs coming up, the biggest slope stock competition in the world, Crankworks. Wow, what a great set of first runs we yeah. saw so far. You just never know how the drama is going to play out, but there you go. Classic Brandon Semenuk, Brett having some problems, and then Logan Pete, man, just continuing on that consistent streak. Well, it's that pressure to get on the podium. I mean, Martin said it right there. Your brother said it as well. I mean, you really want to get up in that top three. Yeah, it's great to perform out here, but you're really trying to get up in that podium for sure. All right. All right, well, we haven't heard from Hannah Bernard in a while. I think we need to check in with Hannah and see what's going on. Let's set it down to her right now. Fourth member of our team, Hannah Bernard. Hannah. 
Hey, thanks very much, guys. Well, I'm up here with the guy that has the best seat in the house, Paul Rack, head judge here at Red Bull Joyride 2015. Now, we've seen every guy on that list come down for run number one. Some of the guys not having the performance that they wanted, obviously going into run number two, wanting some redemption. What are you going to have to see from those guys in order for them to get on top of the podium? Pretty much they got to trick every feature on this course and do almost the most difficult tricks they can to pretty much get on the box or bump out Rana Samanak. And now we've had a lot of talk. There's 13 trickable features on this course. How important is it for them to trick every single hit? Absolutely. At this level, you need to hit every feature, hit, trick every feature, and maybe throw in an extra combo. And now a topic that you are not familiar with at all, Brandon and Brett. Now, obviously, Brandon coming out with that first run with a stellar performance, ending up with a 93. We saw Brett have a crash in run number one. You're familiar with Brett's style. What are you going to need to see from him in order to get on top of the podium and claim that triple crown victory? Well, I think he's going to throw what he has, and sometimes he's got something else left in the bag that we still haven't seen. So I think it might I hope it does, and I hope it's going to be a great show. All right, well, you're a busy guy. I'll let you get back to it. Runs number two coming up next. Guys, back up to you. I love how Paul Rack handles that right there. The judges are almost like politicians the way they handle it so well right there. <laughs> We're trying to, like, pick into it and trying to find a little bit more of it. So what they do is they re-rack them, and so this is going to change things up, right, Cam? Yeah, absolutely. The guys who had the lowest scoring runs are going to drop in first. You see Sam Pilgrim starting it off. He fell down on that third feature and decided to go back up to the course rather than ride down. So it goes down from there. We'll see Thomas Zeta, Cam Zink, Nikolai Rogakin, and, of course, rolling through the list there. I'm excited to see Torcata Testa as well dropping in. 10th. Well, then you got to look at uh, Brandon Samaduk. What's going to happen here is Brandon Samaduk is going to get the last shot at it because since he's got the best score so far, Br Brandon Samaduk will go last. So will it be a victory lap for him or will he be eclipsed by somebody else? And he'll look to play catch up. You know, this is all going to play out here. Run number two is coming up. Before we get to that, let's get an update from Tina Dixon on the new start list. Tina, what's going on? Well, I'm actually down here with Tom Van Steedberg, and we saw him do that giant front flip off the cabin drop. First of all, how are you holding up? How are you feeling right now? Uh, my shoulder is a bit sore. I can't really move it too much, but um, I'm all right. I don't think I broke anything, or, but I don't think I'll be doing a second run, so kind of sucks. You're really good friends with Brett Reeder. What do you think is going on in his mind right now? He's probably just going to try and what he did this uh, the first run, but obviously land it. Um, I don't know. You're confident he's going to land it. He'll land it, yeah, for sure. All right, there you guys go. Second runs are coming up next. All right, that's my boy Steesberger down there in the mix. And I mean, you're in the movie with him, Unreal, and that front flip that he unleashes, unleashes in Unreal is unreal. Well, it's wild seeing how much of a gladiator yeah. that dude is. Anybody else hitting the ground that hard, they'd be, yeah. you know, going and nursing their wounds. But he's just like, you know, I'm probably not that hurt. You know, I'll be back soon. All right, well, this guy right now, he had all smiles on his face when he uh, first showed up for that first run. Things didn't go his way. But now it looks like a little more of the game face has entered into uh, Sound Pilgrim's face now. He knows he's down in 18th. He's going to try and climb up that leaderboard. Anytime you want. All right. Well, here we go right now. Third at Joyride in 2013. Fifth in France Craigworks. And here he comes. It's Sam Pilgrim. Well, watch how far he gets behind that bike right there to initiate uh. that flat drop backflip. He's the first person to do it a few years ago. Getting that 360X up. Turn the bars halfway around. There it is. The Cork 720. He gets it that time. Going upside down and spinning 720 degrees into the four pack. Backflip tuck no hander. Backflip tail up on the second one. He's making it all the way down the course this time, Brad. I'm feeling it. Here we go, Sam Pilgrim, keeping on, it going. On the cannon, getting that flip off of that no radius takeoff. Looked like he was transferring oh. that 360 right there, going from one takeoff to the other landing. Yeah, just a slight case up the cabin. We got a tail whip up on top of the cabin, a 360 down. Over to the snail berm. Here we go. One more to go for Sam Pilgrim. Second and final run up the whale tail. Sam Pilgrim, tuck no hander up, back flip table down. He made it from top to bottom. I mean, right now, Cam, how big of a relief that is. You're all the way in last place. You come out there, second to final run, and you land a run. Well, also, it was all on the line, too. He had the lowest score out of that first run, so basically nothing to fall back on. So the fact that he was able to put down a clean one with a lot of bangers in it, actually, he's got to be stoked. 
We'll take another look at him here, but I... Talk a little bit about this run here, Cam. So look at this. He fixed it the last time. Oh, look he, at that. The head direction change. You know, he's got to spot his landing early. So he's upside down. He's trying to keep that chin pinned to the shoulder. So he's able to do what gymnasts do and get that rotation. And he fixed his mistakes from last run, was able to make it to this four pack finally. He had that flip whip on that second one. And of course, on that cannon, doing another flat takeoff back foot. He's a guy who invented that a few years ago. Now you see a ton of riders doing it. You know what I like is now he got the smile back. Up top before he dropped in on that second run. He wasn't smiling up there because, you know, it's serious business when it comes down to it and you're trying to focus and put down a run that you're trying to do. Yeah, he gave himself something to smile about now. It's great. So they go in reverse order. So he had the lowest score. So that's why he was the one to go first. 10.2 on run number one, and you know it's going to be improvement. How much of an improvement here for run number two? And he will climb up there into eight spot with a 62 for Sam Pilgrim. That's a top 10 right there if that holds up. Woo-hoo. All right, so next up, Thomas Zeta. What do you know about Thomas Zeta? Well, Thomas Zeta, it's so fun to watch him progress on the scene. He goes to more contests than a lot of the riders, and his technique is very unique. He's got a lot of tricks that he can pack into just one air. And he's also got this style that he puts on his tail ups as well. You'll see him wearing this shirt right here. It's a picture of him with his signature style doing that tail up. You don't see anybody getting their legs that far behind them while the bike is backwards. Well, here we go in 18th place, looking to improve on that. Six in the FMB Diamond Series, ninth last year here at Joyride. This is Thomas Zeta. Let's see if we can see that signature Thomas Zeta style starting off with a 360 down the start drop. And that 360 tail up, nobody else is doing that on the up box. Backflip tail up, there we go. Landed sideways, but this time his tire staying on. Thank goodness we're gonna see him continue this run here. We got the four pack, 360 on the first jump. And that double tail up so smooth on and that second jump. And a perfect landing on that. Here's where it went wrong before, the cannon. 360 table, he lands straight this time, fixed that mistake. And we got that classic Thomas nice. Zeta style on that Superman tail up over the hip. All right, up the cabin, what's he got? Up the cabin, it's a bar spin. And a 360 down. So that's gonna set him up here for the snail berm, and he's gonna have one more to go. Here's the whale tail for Thomas Zeta. Bar spin into the whale tail, and a 360 uh. X up. Classic <laughs> Thomas Zeta style rolling through that finish line. And Zeta, yeah, arm in the air. Gotta be pumped on that one. Just in time for that sun to pop. It looks like it's turning into a nice day. And Thomas Zeta, man, glowing bike, glowing sky. Everything went good for him on that run. You go from being so nervous before your first run of the day to finishing your second run. That's got to be such a big relief, especially when you're in one piece. You know, he's got to be stoked. He's done for the day. He did his job. Let's take a look back at the replay. 360 in that first jump in the four pack. And then look how smooth he is on this double tail up. His body's chilling. His bike's whipping around, connecting to those pedals. So a 19.4 was the score that he had when he had the problem on run number one. And uh, Paul Rack and the judge is taking their time. And the reason they take their time, they want to make sure that they're putting the riders in the correct position. So that's why you see them taking just a little bit more time. So 19.4, that was run number one. There we go. Into sixth place, a 69.2 for Thomas Data. And he is happy that he is done for the day. So let's take a look at how things are looking right now for your top three. Thomas Lemoyne in that third spot, 81-2, 85 for Logan Pete, number two. And Brandon Semenuk, your leader, with a 93.80. And now let's focus back up top. Let's take all of our attention to a two-timer club member. And I'm talking about uh, Cam Zink. There he is, all red, white, and blued out here today. Well, we've been seeing a lot of guys fix their mistakes from their first run. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that Cam Zink does the exact same thing. Well, here we go. As I said, two-time Joyride winner. Coming in hot second in final run. Put your hands together for the legend that is Cam Zink. Cam Zink has that flat drop flip, and this year he's landed right on that landing. 360 X up off the up box. He's already improving on this run right now. Backflip one-footed X up on the step up. Now he's coming into that four-pack. Getting speed out of that shark fin. And going backflip through Man Seagram oh, again. Oh, 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 no. Once again, getting hung up with that rotation. Man, oh. he, had the, he had the speed that time. His body made it to the landing. It was just it looked like a lack of rotation on the backflip side of things. He was completely extended with that Superman Seagram. 
just not able to bring the whole thing around and get back on the bike. Well, an unfortunate turnabout uh, for Cam Zink out here. That's going to end his day. At least he is in one piece. Put your hands together for Cam Zink, the legend, two-time winner at Joyride as he makes his way to the top of this landing area. You know, the main thing about Cam Zink is he's out here to put on a show for the crowd. So, yeah, his chance at winning this event for the third time may be ruined, but he's going to put on a show and ride the rest of this course. And this one's for the fans out here. You're seeing a legend right here, Cam Zink, finishing off his second and final run after the fall. Look at the crowd, listen to the crowd. They truly love this guy. He's been putting on a show for so many years. The winner in 2006, repeated it four years later in 2010. He's a legend on the Boneyard Slope. And here he goes up the whale tail. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Yeah, gonna goon it out there at the end. He comes across. You guys know what to do, Whistler. Put your hands together for the legend that is Cam Zink. Well, so that's going to do it for Cam Zink. And as we move down this uh, adjusted start list, next up is going to be Nikolai Rogatkin. Now, he was uh, down there in the mix, but he had that fall, so that puts him as the fourth guy to come in here today. And you know that fall, that he, he didn't do anything wrong. That tire went out, and he needed that speed up that cannon. He wasn't able to get it. I can't wait to see him ride the entire course. Yeah, and he was on, he was on point with that first run, but he had a little bit of problem, and I'll show you what we're looking at. So here it was. This link was the highlight of that run. It was the Quark 720 right into that cash uh -oh. roll, which is essentially a Quark 720 on a different uh -oh. axis. Here's when Look he realizes tire. that there's no air in his tires. He still tries to tail up that cannon. Yeah. He's got a big combo in store for that it's thing. It's almost like, I don't care if I got a flat, I'm going to go for this anyway. Exactly. I'm pretty sure he knew the flat was there, but he was going to still try to make it all the way to the bottom without any air in his tire. He can do it this time, Brad. I'm feeling it. Well, indeed, he can definitely do it, and he is ready and locked and loaded to make it happen. Right now, third overall in your FMB Diamond Series. He took a second place in Crankworks in Rotorua. Here he comes right now, second in final run for the U.S., Nikolai Rogatkin. Here's this new trick for Nikolai. It's the Fast Plant 360, going right into the double tail up off of the up box. Front flip bar spin, of course landing perfect on that step up. Getting the bar spin out of that shark fin, and here's the four pack. This is where he feels right at home. Cork 720 once again. Can he land smooth on this cash roll? Oh, oh yes. it looked perfect. I didn't see any dirt thrown up. He's still got air in his tire. Here we go. Tail whip to bar spin Whoa. on the cannon. And a dump, a triple a tail triple whip. A triple tail whip? All right, here he goes up to the cabin. Front flip tuck, no hander up the cabin. Can he hold it together? Tail whip down. This oh. is insane. Here we go to the snail burn. There's only one more to go to the whale tail for Nikolai Rogatkin. What's he got? Tuck, no hander up. And a back flip down. Stomped oh. that run. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oxygen here in the booth. Put your hands together for Nikolai Rogakin. I love this, the triple tail whip that he added to that run. I wasn't that expecting was, that. No, I wasn't either. Oh, my goodness. Nikolai Rogakin with one run to go. Had the flat tire on the first run, but not this time. I think he would have came down even if he would have had a flat tire. Let's take a look at the replays here, man, of Nikolai Rogakin. Was that run stacked or what? This is the section of the course where his first run went wrong, but let's see how smooth he lands on this cash roll. Completely perfect. Keeping the air in that tire, and I knew he had this combo here in the cannon. And he did it under pressure. The tail wow. to bar spin. I don't know how he squeezes it in at the last second. Same thing with his triple whip. How did he squeeze in that third whip at the last second? You, you and I are ready to call that a double. He almost threw it away right here. The front flip tuck no hander, landing so far, getting that tail up down. Oh, my goodness, right there. That was some good stuff. All right. He's trying to beat an 85. He's trying to beat a 93.8 for the top spot. The score coming in for Nikolai Rogakin on run number two. What does it say? 90.4 into second place for Nikolai Rogakin. That would be his biggest finish ever here at Joyride if he's to stay in second place. Wow, I need some oxygen. Let's send it down to Tina Dixon. Tina. And Nikolai, you just jumped from 17th to second. How redeeming is that run? It was stacked full of difficulty. Oh, I no idea how nervous I was up there, you know, messing up the first run because of the flat and uh, having to do that cash roll once again. But uh, 
the support of Whistler, you know, I had to send it and uh, got it done. So couldn't be, couldn't feel better. So stoked. Everyone down here was biting their nails as you finished off with that. Well, tell what were you telling yourself there? Oh, probably the uh, scariest backflip I've ever done. You know, just please trying to hang on and uh, you know rolling through this finish corral. No better feeling. Well, what a great second run, guys. Oh my God, a great second run is an understatement for Nikolai Rogakin today. That was absolute bonkers. And to do it on your second run when all the pressure in the world is on your shoulders. He hasn't done good here at Joyride, but he has right now today posting up his first ever score at Joyride in the 90s count. How awesome. He just says, you know, I'm in Whistler. I was ready to send it. All right, so now Brett Reeder is going to take a shot at it now. Remember. He won at Crankworks Rotorua. He won at Crankworks Late as Alp. Took the win out there. So if he could win out here today, he would complete, that's right, the hat trick and take three wins, a triple crown winner. Here we go. Next up, second and final run from Canada for Trek C3. This is Brett Reeder. Brett Reeder starting off once again with that flat drop backflip, one footed can. There we go, getting that opposite 360 bar spin to bar spin back, and that front flip bar spin, huge amplitude on that trick. Getting the bar spin out of the shark fin. Can he nail this? Backflip, double tail whip. He connects to the pedals. Oh, no, no, no I think no. it's, oh, I think his tire might have blown out. Something oh. happened in the bowl there in between the first and second jump on the four pack. There will be no triple crown in 2015 for Brett Reeder. Yeah, one of, the, one of the big news things here, as we talked about it earlier today, is he is going to be the overall series winner for Slope Style at Crankworks on the World Tour because of his first place in Rotorua, at Crankworks in Rotorua, and then the latest out, getting that win out there. So no matter what happens out here, he is going to be the series Slope Style champion for Crankworks for the first ever Crankworks World Tour as he makes his way to the top. I want everyone here in Whistler to put your hands together for that man right there. It's been an amazing run at it all year. Let's hear it for Brett Reeder. Come on, Whistler. So much pressure just building all year on this one guy. How much weight can one person hold on their shoulders? He was pushing himself, Brad. He had not had that trick all year, that backflip double tail up. He knew he needed it to put, to, to put down an A run here to beat Brandon Semenuk. And he's doing it for the crowd here. His tire still has air in it. Doing the backflip bar up, the 360 down. True showman, Brett Reeder, putting on a show for the crowd. And here we go off the well tail, and that is going to do it. As he makes his way down, let's show appreciation for an amazing season for that guy right there. One more diamond stop on the FMB. That's going to be Rampage, but he's going to finish it off, Brett Reeder. Well, it wasn't a victory lap for him today. We saw him take victory laps at the first two crankwork stops. Today was a different story. But, man, he's got to be breathing a fresh, breathing fresh air that that's done now. And thanks for everyone joining us on Red Bull TV. If you uh, want to check out things, don't forget about the event analyzer. If you want to take a look at any of the runs, the event analyzer on Red Bull TV got you covered. So here's how it's uh, racking up right there. Logan Pete, number three, an 85. Nikolai Rogaki just kind of slid his way up there in that second spot with a 90.4. And then Brandon Semenuk, 93.8 in the top spot. Now... We go to Anthony Missouri once again. Here's the guy that made a name for himself back in 2011. Not a lot of people knew him. He was 15 years old. He came out here to Crankworks, and he ended in third place. Got third place last year. He's got two podiums at Joyride. Can he make it a third? <laughs> here he comes, having some fun, dropping a next second and final run for Anthony Missouri. Only got a bar spin before the course even starts. He's starting out now with that tail up off the start drop. Oh, so much style. Oh, too much style on that dumped out 360 bar spin, looping out and sliding down the landing. You know, Cap. sometimes you just get too corked on that rotation and your front tire's too high. The axis of rotation just wasn't quite right. So when his rear wheel landed, this front tire was too far away from yeah. landing and he wasn't able to grab that rear brake in time and that rear wheel just spun right out from Dude. under him. Next thing it touched was his butt. It's like you read my mind. I was going to ask you about the loop out and you just kind of said it right there. Perfect, man. You read my mind, dude. Nicely done. All right, well, you talk about it a little bit, looping out. Let's take a look at uh, here what happened with uh, Anthony Mazzari here on a second and final run. So he's coming into this up box. He connects to the riding platform, gets really upside down to that 360, catches the bars, but there you go. You see it, the rear tire hitting first, the front tire not even touching the landing. Next thing to touch was his butt, and he slid right down like a kid in the playground. Yeah, that's a game of millimeters. 
I would say inches if you're in the U.S., but it's a game of millimeters out here, and right there, just uh, getting away from him on that one. Once again, thanks for everybody joining us on Red Bull TV. This has been an amazing day. Get all your pictures in, too, as well. Hashtag Joyride2015, hashtag Red Bull TV, and hashtag Crankworks. And if you want to check out the runs from all the competitors, check out the event analyzer. Got you covered right there, Red Bull TV style. Well, take a look right here, Brad. It looks like Anthony Missouri also is going to put on a show for the crowd. He's climbing up onto that landing. Might, might ride through this course here for us. Uh, that's the kind of person he is. He's not just going to walk it down. Anthony Missouri is going to come on down and finish this run off. Yeah, it just gives the crowd an opportunity to thank these guys for going so hard for all of our entertainment. Flat spin 360 on the first, flat spin on the second. Classic Anthony Missouri. Off that cannon with some style. Just listen to the crowd, man. Even though he's not able to put this one down and land a big score, they're still so appreciative of how he's been giving it his all, all week. And here he comes down, gonna set it up for the snail berm, and then wrap it up on the whale tail, and this will wrap things up. Second and final run, and a day of competition for Anthony oh. Missouri. Oh! Man, going, going court flat spin out of that thing as well. You don't see that too often. You see a lot of 360s and a lot of flips, but going right in the middle on the axis there. Well, Whistle, you know what to do. Let's hear it for Anthony Missouri. He's a two-time podium from Joyride. Not going to be the day today. We'll look for him in future costs and look for him next year for sure. So score in for him. It doesn't look like it's going to be an improvement, so he's going to keep the score that he has. Wait for that to come in. Yeah, so he's going to keep the 40.8. That's going to keep in that 15 spot. So the top 15 or a very good rider, just not able to put it together today, Anthony Missouri. So now we start looking at who's coming up. Louis Rabol on the way. Yannick Ranieri on the way. Torquato Testa, who we've talked a lot about. But Louis Rabol is going to get the nod here in a second run. Uh, you got to like Louis Rabol, what he brings to the table out here. Yeah, Louis Rabot, a well-rounded rider as well. He was in Rampage last year, his first time trying that. So definitely hopping on all bikes, trying mm -hmm. out all disciplines. Top 10 finish at Crankworks Rotorua, 10th place. Here we go. From France, Louis Rabot, second and final run for Louis. Louis Rabot, tuck no hander off that up box, rolling into that step-up jump with a 360 tail up, getting right on those pedals, not casing, carrying the speed off the shark fin into that four-pack. Flat spin 360 for Louis Rabol, putting his classic style on it. A cannonball to tuck wow. no hander. Crazy combo. Louis keeping it going here. Going off the cannon, getting that backflip, landed long, but holding on so tight, no head bob. Tail up on that hip for Louis Rabol. And up the cabin. Up the cabin's an opposite 360, this time landing perfect and going regular 360 off, so just oppo, balancing everything out. Oppo three up, regular three out, setting it up. Can he whale tail here for Louis Rabol? Here's a whale tail. Tuck no hander and backflip tabletop down for Louis Rabol. And you can see it seems like you can just see the jubilation in these guys when they finish that runoff. Like, okay, no matter what the score is, I'm happy to get her done there. Put your hands together for Louis Rabol. That's going to do it for him out here today. We'll wait for that score to come in. Louis Rabol finishing off his second and final run here today. And Louis was down there in that 14th spot. Had a 46.2 on run number one, but cleaning things up on run number two. So one of the highlights of this run was his ability to go opposite on top of the cabin and regular off. This is not your neighborhood dirt jumps. So you see that in dirt jumps, it's really difficult there, but doing it on top of the cabin and off, definitely, that's why he's one of the top riders out here at Joyride. Oh, he's got the fresh mo too. He's looking older now. He's got that mustache rolling, all right. He's very distinguished, Brad. <laughs> He's distinguished. There it is. So Louis Rabot waiting for the score to come in. Where does he jump up in the mix? And he get up in the top 10, 46-2 on the first run. Run number two, survey says, 74-4 into sixth place for Louis Rabot. And that, that's one of those things, man. Just as higher that you can finish, the better you're going to do out there. And so whether you get six, that's very respectable. Next up, Yannick Ranieri. Now, we know what happened with Nikolai Rogakin. He went down on his first run. He was able to put it together on a second run. Yannick had a little bit tougher of a crash on run number one. Now, can he put it together on his second and final run? 
Seventh last year, eighth in Crankworks, France. And he's ready to do it right now. Doing it for Red Bull and YT Industries. Drop it in for you next. It's Yannick Granieri. Yannick Granieri started things off the 360 off the start drop. Getting his tail up smooth off the up box. And you know what he wants right here. It's that cork 720, and he gets it once again. Off the Oof. shark fin, not tricking that. Coming into that four pack, he's going backflip tail up. Such a smooth landing, grabbing a pedal and going that backflip Superman oh. seat grab Indian air. We saw it last round. That's a new one for him for this event. On that cannon, he's holding that tuck no hander, coming into those hips now. There it is, that flat spin 360X up. So over to the cabin, up the cabin for Yannick. On the cabin, he's going with a tall backflip and a tail up down. So in France, he messed up the last feature, but then he fixed it in his second run. Can he do it here? Here we go, the whale tail. One more to go for Yannick Ranieri. Bar spin up, 360X up down, yes! and he lands it. Puts it down, Yannick Ranieri. Eighth place in latest Zalpin Crankworks, and a big relief and lots of weight off his shoulder. The monkey's off his back. Oh, he's got to feel so good. Look at him there, just <laughs> rejoicing. Well, I like to see Louis Rebeau. Man, the I mean, fact that he kind of just completely had it all fall off the tracks on that last feature, it's exactly what happened to him in France. It's got to feel so good to fix that mistake in the second run. Look at this. This is a new one for him. The backflip Superman seat grab Indian Air. Not only is it a new trick, he's got huge style with it. Grabbing that seat with his hand, doing the Superman, and crossing the legs. That's the Indian Air portion of the trick. He had that bar spin in, and then going for the 360X up, down, now. He messed up on the truck driver, so he's saying, I'm going to keep my hands on these bars, turn them back, bring them back straight. And that was a perfect decision to finish that run and, for him. Uh, and Cam, it seems like it's renewed focus on him. It seems like he's been so focused this season, more so than I've ever seen him. Seems Absolutely. Like he's hungry. He's been practicing, training. He has an airbag at home now, so just putting in his time, doing his homework, getting his slope style game ready. All right, Yannick from a 50.4, falling in the last element, waiting for that score to come in. And a 76.8 top five finish for Yannick Ranieri. Nicely done, Yannick. Oh, man, that is a big relief off his shoulders. He is happy about that one right there. Well, let's take a look how things are stacking up. Here's your top five, Yannick Ranieri, the Frenchman in fifth. Thomas Lemoyne in that four spot. Logan Pete holding it down in third. Nikolai Rogakin in second. And your leader, Brandon Semenuk, on top of the heat. I'll tell you what, man. I love the story about this kid, Torquato Testa. I knew nothing about him about three weeks ago. Then he shows up in Colorado, and he gets on the podium in second place. I still, Cam, didn't even know who he was, and he earned himself a spot because of that finish. He's here today to make it happen right now. Second place in Colorado, coming in his first ever joyride, Torquato Testa. Torquato Testa bursting on the scene right now. Backflip off the flat drop out of the start gate. The double tail up off the up box. He lands that one perfect. There we go. There's that 360 tail up. That's what we saw him mess up yesterday. Stomping it clean this time. Into the four pack. He loves these two jumps. Backflip on the first jump. And backflip tuck no hander on the second jump in the four pack. <laughs> He's got a new one for you here <laughs> on the cannon. Oh, flip whip oh, on the cannon. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh. So. Oh, man, that's history right there. Nobody has ever tried a backflip tail up off of a cannon log feature. Torcado Testa bursting onto the scene, bringing new moves. And you see the smile. I mean, you got to be smiling no matter what happens here. Your first ever time get, making it to the big show and coming out and trying something no one's done. He has the best attitude. This is a crazy situation to put somebody in who's never been to North America, hasn't ridden on a stage like this, and he's right at home. Well, let's take a look at the replay. Torquato Testa right there doing his thing. Here we go. Ooh, never been done heck? before. It's one thing to flip the cannon. It's another thing to do a variation. We've seen tuck no handers and bar spins in the flips, but he's going straight for next level pro progression. We weren't expecting to see for a couple more years. Backflip, tail up. Unfortunately, he landed so long on that. You know, when it's a new trick, you don't know how much speed and how much pop to do. Nobody's ever done it before. He doesn't have footage to use to try to learn it. He's doing it himself, and he went a bit too long. Well, here comes the Italian stallion to kind of finish things off here. Over to the snail berm. He's going to set up for one more. In his first ever Red Bull joyride, Torquato Testa 
I guarantee you this is not <laughs> the last you're going to see of Torcado Testa. <laughs> you know what? You can go out on a limb on that one because you know he is going to be back. Oh, man, his attitude is focused. How well-rounded his bag of tricks are, his ability to take new tricks and do them on crazy obstacles. He is here to stay. Yeah, so fun to watch, too, and in, uh, surprising the world and getting in here. And yesterday, the look on his face, he looks like he was completely so scared yesterday. He comes out <laughs> a little bit more comfortable today. The 52, that's the one he's going to keep. 14th place, but that's no indication on how good this rider is. Exactly. It may not be a podium for him today, but he showed what he had in front of the world stage. And that's going to do it for Turquata right there. You can see Nikolai, the first one to give him a high five on that one. He knows what it's like because Nikolai was that same kid a couple years ago too as well. There you look at it right now. Pete in third. Rogakin number two. Samanek number one. And it's definitely not over. But once again, Camp, I keep saying it. Samanek just has looked so relaxed and the pressure's been off him. And when you're relaxed and you're comfortable, comfortable i got to think that uh, it's in your favor. Next up now. Paul Genovese down in the 13th spot. Now Paul has uh, been doing some big stuff. Seventh place FMB Diamond Series. 11th in Crankworks Rotorua. 12th in Leda Zalp Crankworks. And here we go. Second and final run for Paul Genovese. Paul Genovese. He's got that truck driver off the start gate once again. Land a little squirrely, but correcting and making it over that up box. Does he have speed for the third jump? He does not. Oh. Bummer for Paul Genovese right there, Brad. You talk about the truck driver earlier, Donnie. How difficult is that trick on, when on a scale of things of all the tricks you're landing in a run? Well, especially off a drop, too, to start the run. He spins toward his front foot, which is technically, uh, they call it wrong, but a lot of riders do it. And it allows them to do a lot more stylish tricks spinning toward that front foot. But it is also harder to do 360s off of a flat drop takeoff. So he's not only doing that, but he's chucking the bars in there as well. We call it a truck driver. It's that 360 bar spin. So Paul Genovese, that's going to do it for him. Still coming up for him. Eddie Ghani on the way. Greg Watts, Tommy G, Sam Reynolds, Omos Des Moines, Logan Pete, and then Brandon Semenuk. And by the time, when by the time we get to Brandon Semenuk, you got to wonder, is he going to be still be in the lead or is someone going to eclipse him out? And you look at some of the guys coming up, and it could happen. But well, it's, it's going to take a near-perfect run to do that. It's a tall task to knock Brandon off that spot any yeah. day, but with that run he threw down, man, these guys got, they got their work in store for him. So if you're Medi Ghani and you're coming up next, what's your game plan here? Just to go for everything you know what to do or just land the run that was in your mind? I feel like just do what he does. He's brought a bunch of new tricks that we didn't know that he had. We haven't seen him do the flat drop flip in a contest earlier this year. So he's got that. Who knows what else he has? He's obviously been practicing. Well, seventh place in Crankworks, late as out. Here he comes. Second and final run from France. This is Medi Ghani. Medigani, of course, start now getting so far behind that bike to flip it off the flat drop. 360 bar spin on that up box. Into the step up, going so high on a front flip. Wow. Now we're into the four pack, Brad. Back flip bar spin on the first jump. There's one. Carrying speed into the second jump. A double tail whip. Oh! oh. And that one gets away from Medigani, and that's going to be his day. Let's hear it for Medigani one more time. Not what he was looking for, and he'll just have to settle for that 11th place where he's at right now with a 62-6. Medi Ghani, it's so exciting to see him finally get onto the stage. He's been working toward this for so long. Unfortunately, it looked like he landed a little long on that first jump in the four pack, and he was pushing through, trying to make speed out of nothing to clear that second jump and squeeze in that double tail up. He might have landed a little sideways and just slid right out. You know, we talked a little bit about it at halftime. I was talking with your brother. We were talking to Martin about the pressure. And when you, when you know the run you're trying to beat is a 93.8 or a 90 for second or even 85, does that put more pressure on your head there, Cam, when you're up there getting ready to drop in? you got to focus on the right thing. So focusing on what somebody else did maybe isn't always the best case scenario. You heard Anthony in his interview talking about he's just trying to do him, not worrying about what the judges are saying, what other riders are doing. Just play toward your own strengths. And I think Medigani was doing that. But still, even if you have the right strategy, anything can happen it's not like he, it, Brandon Semenuk was in his head at that point he was just sort of trying to land his run right yeah no he was just focusing on exactly what he'd been playing over and over and over in his head all week that's the way this slope style game goes you spend no waking moment not thinking about it and even when you're sleeping you find yourself dreaming about it <laughs> and Maddie Ghani right here gonna come on down the whale tail kokety whale tail gonna land that <laughs> flip and that's gonna do it for Maddie Ghani. So a good solid showing, still in that 11th spot for him. 
And tell you what, just being invited to the big show, a big day at Medigani. And even 11th place is going to give him a lot of points. This is a diamond event, so he'll be back yep. here next year if all goes well. All right, so, all right, now, now let's take our attention up top. Greg Watts, a very good friend of yours, also a guy who's won it before. Greg Watts, he knows what he can do, but what does he do here? He's in 10th with a 68.6, and he had a pretty decent run. His run was so good, but, yeah, I grew up riding with this guy, so I know how many tricks he has. Now it comes down to which ones he's going to choose for the second run. All right, we'll drop it in for you next. 2009 Joy Ride Champion, his second and final run, currently in 10th. Get loud for Greg Watts. Greg Watts starting off with a 360 off that start tower into the up box, missing the trick. He was doing a Superman seat grab on that before. Getting the 360, he was getting a 360 suicide. So he's going to really have a lot of ground to make up right here if he's going to improve on that first run score. Backflip suicide on the first jump in the four pack. Going good now, but then a straight backflip on the second. Here he's coming into the cannon. Getting that, wow, holding that suicide so long, giving the crowd plenty of opportunities to take a picture of Greg Watts. Into the joyride cabin, not getting a trick up, but then nailing that 360 down. And over to the snail berm, one more to go. For the former joyride champ, Greg Watts, here we go, up the whale tail. And Greg just casually flipping down out of that thing. I think he knows after he missed a couple tricks at the beginning of that run, he was not going to improve on his score, and he was just doing a few things for the crowd, knowing that his first run was the one that he was going to keep. I like how you bring that up, too. I mean, it's one of those things, that if, you, if you have a couple baubles or you don't get the tricks that you want to do, and you know that's probably not going to improve, why take the chances, right? Yeah, it's true. You know, he had such a packed first run. It put him in that 10th place spot, and he's thinking, man, what do I do to improve on that run? And then when you miss a couple things, you know it's probably not going to happen. I'll tell you what, he's been doing it for a long time and continues to always be up there in the top 10. So the 68-6, that's the one he's going to keep, and he's going to end up in that 10th spot. We'll see if that holds up. Put your hands together one more time for Greg Watts. <laughs> and taking a look at it right there, Sam Reynolds, 6, Yannick, 5, Thomas Lemoyne in that 4 spot, Logan Pete, 3, Nikolai Rogak in the 90.4. That's when the 90s start kicking in. And Brandon Selmanuk at 93.8 in that top spot. So five more riders to go, standing in between. Brandon Semenuk getting his seventh podium and his fourth Joyride win. And I'll tell you what, this man right here could do it. He's currently in eighth place. 2012 was the big breakout year for Tommy G. Took the win at Joyride. Let's see what he's got right now. Tommy G sitting in eighth. Second and final run. Put your hands together for Thomas Janone. Thomas Janon, opposite 360 off the start drop. Going regular 360 off the up box. Corked 720, oh, landed perfect there on that step up. Looks like he got a tuck no hander out of that shark fin, rolling right into a backflip bar spin and yes. tuck no hander. Holding on to things into the second jump, 360 clicked, inverted table. Perfect, here we go, Tommy G. We're into the cannon. 360 tuck no hander, oh. so much extension. There it is, that double tail whip, so casual on that hip. And here we go to the cabin, up the cabin. What's it going to be, a suicide no-hander up the cabin? Down the oh, cabin. Oh, there it is, the oh. flat drop flip down. So much pop. One more to go through the snail berm, setting up for the whale tail. Thomas Janon. Tail up in, how will he finish? 360 bar spin, get the bars! Thank goodness he nabbed those things at the last <laughs> I second. Love it. Get those bars out of cam on that one right there. He knew what to do. Tommy G getting a good run in there. That should, pro might, that should be an improvement. 71.8. I think that could improve for Tommy G. 100%. His first run was so good. But remember, he had that 360 off the last step down, and he opened up. He didn't get the variation. This time, throwing the bars into the last second, getting his hands on those grips, and cruising smoothly through the finish line. And let's take a look here at Tommy G. This is his run through the cabin. He had a suicide no-hander up, throw back to the old school. But look how much pop he had on that flat drop flip coming off of that cabin. And that's a perfect land. You can't get better than that. Up to the whale tail. Here's the top what you're talking about. He had the tail up in, which is so tough to do, and that 360 bar spin. Where's my Hannah bar? There it is. Found it. S smooth through the landing. <laughs> All right, 71.8, the best score of him. He's trying to beat an 85. Logan Pete is in third with that 85. That's the score he needs to beat to get in a podium position. Has he done it? Tommy G waiting for the score to come in. Does he get on the podium? 
Run number two score says 88 into third place yeah. for Tommy G. He is on the podium right now. Wow. Two times a charm. He puts it down on his second and final run. That's a good one. And Tommy G finds himself on another Red Bull Joyride podium and let's send things down to Tina Dixon. Stand by. Tommy, you're now sitting on the podium, and with that reaction that we saw on your face, what are your thoughts on your score? How redeeming is that? Uh, you know, the first years I finished first, and was just like insane in my head was going on the year after and the year after, always missing runs, only on that even, and now I'm really happy to be at the bottom. What do you think of the rest of the competition ready to come down? Uh, I guess the first place is taken by the local boy, but uh, let's see if I can stay on the, on the podium, and yeah, good luck to everybody. All right, what a great second run, guys. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, he said he's happy to get to the bottom right there, but I'm pretty sure he's also happy that he's in third place. He's on a podium right now. Exactly. He's been on there before. He's wanted to get on there again <laughs> for the last couple of years, and look, he's got a chance to do it right here. It just shows, Cam, how hard that is, man. You get up on the podium, you win it. 2012, you probably think, oh, I could probably win it again. I'll probably get on the podium next year. It hasn't been until this year he's jumped back into a podium position. There you go. Tommy G holding it down from Belgium in the third spot. Nikolai Rogakin, no one challenging that 90.4 yet in second. And Brandon Selmanuk, it's going to take a near-perfect run to beat that 93.8 here today. Yeah, that's true. It's going to take a lot. Let's see who we have coming up next. Well, we have none other than Sam Reynolds coming up for you next. And Sam Reynolds been having a very decent year so far this year. Currently in the top 10, eighth in the FMB Diamond Series. Sixth in Crankworks Rotorua, ninth in Leda Zalpa Crankworks. Let's see what he's got right now. Coming in next, second and final run for Sam Reynolds. 360 for Sam Reynolds, starting things off. Into the up box, we got a tail whip. Looking real smooth so far. We got a 720, oh. so smooth. A little bit of a tabletop out of that shark fin. Now we're into the four pack. Backflip tail up on the first jump. Carrying speed, what's it gonna be on the second jump? There it is, that nothing can, Nova can. Legs to the side, hands off the bars. Superman off the cab, off the cannon. Finds the paddles. Double tail up this time oh. on the hip. Oh, slips it a little bit. Now he's coming up to the cabin now. We're on the cabin for Sam Reynolds with a backflip up, a 360 down. So that sets it up to the snail berm and our final, final object right here, the whale tail. Tuck no hander up for Sam Reynolds, finishing things off with a backflip. Tuck no hander. And Sam nice. Reynolds putting that down, that run right there for Sam Reynolds. He's currently in seventh. Had a decent run on run number one, Cam. I mean, he had the 74-8. That was a good run from you. Think that could improve possibly? I think he threw some stuff in there that we didn't see in the first run. It was also just really dialed. You know, he's picking different tricks like that no foot of can, no hander. I love how long he holds his hands off and just floats alongside his bike. And once again, you see uh, pretty much all the smiles when you get down to this finish area. You know it's done. Taking a look at some of these replays here. Here we go. This was Sam Reynolds on the four pack, getting that backflip tail whip on the first jump. And here's my favorite. Legs to the side, arms straight up in the air, not even touching the bike with anything. Maybe his hip rubbing up against the seat. Finishing things off here with the tuck no hander in and the backflip tuck no hander down. Judges love the flip variation on that final step down. And now we wait for the score. What do the judges think of that? Does he get enough to get 88 for third? You need to be at a 90.4 for second or a 93.8 for the top spot, but just to crack a podium, got to beat an 88 right now. We wait the score to come in. Sam Reynolds, run number two. That's going to be an 83.6 wow. top five finish for Sam Reynolds, and he is stoked. He's got to be pumped, Brad. I mean, top five sitting so far. At Crankworx, you know, Joyride, the biggest yeah, event yeah, of the I year. Yeah. He's had bad luck here Joy's before, four. but there he is, sitting in the top five. Wow, and now we are down to just three more competitors to go before this thing is done. Sad to see it coming to an end, but we got three more runs. And right now, I want to send in and check in with Hannah Bernard, standing by with Logan Pete, who just got bumped out by Tommy G. Hannah? Hey, thanks very much, guys. Yes, a drier day here at the Joyride start today, and I have Logan Pete here. Now, Logan, you had a very impressive first run, scoring an 85, but with Tommy G's amazing second run, you're now knocked down to fourth. Now, you got fourth in this comp competition last year. What are you going to do in order to get on that podium today? 
Yeah, I'm gonna try my best. I got a little more in the tank. Um, just gonna try and put it down, stay smooth, and get to the bottom. And now longtime friend Brandon Semenak is dropping down after you. What has he been saying as some encouragement before you go down for your second run? Yeah, we practice together all the time, and he just tell me I know what I'm doing and just to do it. All right, local boy here, Logan Pete, about to drop in for run number two. Guys, back up to you. All right. I like that. That sounds good. Just, you know what to do. Just go do it. Simple <laughs> as that, right? Yeah, thanks, Brandon. Yeah, I right. got that. I, I can do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's still pretty good advice because you know all these guys have the huge bag of tricks. Everybody knows what they can do on every single element, but can you put it together when it counts? And I'll tell you what, this man has been busy. He's been competing in so many disciplines here at Crankworks, been in the running for the king of Crankworks, but here he is, Slopestyle, his second and final run today. He's currently sitting in that sixth spot, looking to improve on that. Give it up, get loud and proud, right here for Thomas Lemoyne. Thomas Lemoyne. 360 off that start drop. 360 table, real good style off the up box. Whoa, he's Whoa. going for the cork 720. Wow, he landed it. I'm not sure if I've seen that one out of him. Barsman out of the shark fin. 360 tuck no hander, so smooth on that There's first jump one. of the four pack. And next one, backflip Barspin to X up on the second jump. He looks stoked. Gets that. This is going good so far. We've got the tuck no hander to Barspin, the combo on the cannon. Into the hip. Oh, slow rotation there. So much style on that flat spin, connecting straight into that hip landing. Up the cabin. He's got the cannonball up the cabin. Down Get the cabin. unique. 360 X up down. Over to the snail berm. Here we go. One more to go. It's the whale tail. Thomas Lemoyne. Tuck no hander into the whale tail. And a 360 bar spin to X up. Out. <laughs> wow, he added a lot into that run. Oh, my goodness. Things are heating up now. <laughs> That was what he wanted to do. Let's hear it for Thomas Lemoyne one more time. Come on, second and final run for him. He has done what he needed to do. Now it comes in. Is there enough? Everybody, everybody coming in. There's Anton, Tommy G in there, Louis Rabot in there. And is that going to shake things up? So we have got to take a look at this, adding some extra. Oh, wow, we couldn't even see from the first angle. That was like an inward table, looking like it was going to be a 360, and then he chucked the shoulders, turned it into a 7, adding a variation with style into that 720. You don't see that very often. Down here to finish it off, it was a tuck no hander in, the 360 Barsman to X up down, and then fist pump to celebrate. All right, well, he is trying to beat an 88 for third, a 90.4 for second, a 93.8 for the top spot. Can he do it? Waiting for it to come in. Sixth place to fourth Whoa. place at 86.6. Fourth place for Thomas Lemoy. <laughs> and that's going to bump Logan Pete even farther down now into fifth. So Logan was in third. Tommy G bumps him down to fourth. Thomas Lemoy comes in and bumps Logan Pete down to the number five spot. And he is the last rider coming your way. Can either stand between Brandon Samanek having a victory lap. Or maybe he can get on the podium for the first time, Logan Pete. Oh, Brad, he said he has more gas in the tank. And after getting bumped out of those positions simultaneously, two runs in a row, he's going to have to dip into that tank. Well, you know that he said he has what it takes in there. There's a couple surprises that he hasn't shown us yet. There he is in fifth. Finished in fourth place last year at Red Bull Joyride. Second and final run. The last guy to upset the balance and try to dethrone Brandon from taking the win. Logan Pete, here we go. Logan Pete, destiny in his own hands. Starting out with a 360 off the start drop. An opposite 360 X up out of the up box. Getting that 720 landing smooth once again on the step up. Carrying speed out of the shark fin into the four pack. Here we go. Backflip bar spin. Once again landing perfect. Missing the trick on the second jump. That's not going to help, but can he keep his composure? There we go. 360 off the cannon. Oh, oh. oh no. Wow. And he's able to roll out of it. Man, what a tough dude. Coming up short, 360 in that cannon, but popping up right away. Logan Pete. Unfortunately, not. Well, and that means one thing right here, getting on his seventh podium in Joyride and taking his fourth win. It's never been done before. This is what we call the victory lap. A big congratulations going to the local boy, Brandon Summit at Cam. Oh, man, it's so insane. I just keep thinking, how many times can the same guy just blow minds on this hill? He's won it four times now. This makes it a true three-peat 
three in a row. He's truly dominating in this sport. So many people painting that target on his back, trying to beat him. Brett was able to do it twice this year, but this is his home turf, and nobody knows winning on the Boneyard like Brandon Semenuk. This is all just a little something something in the tank for you, Whistler. Logan Pete, so consistent, trying to push his limits out here today. But right now, doing it for the fans. He'll be back. The crowd, you love him. Well, I got to tell you what, everyone, you have been in for such a great treat today. What an amazing day. Red Bull TV, thanks for joining us. And this is what we call the victory lap for Brandon Semenuk. Third in 2007, third 2008, second 09, won it in 11, won it in 13, won it in 14, and wins it here today, 2015. Your Red Bull Joyride champion, Brandon Semenuk, on the victory lap. Oh, there's the style. Here's the trick that he wants to do in his run to show you how much style he has, but maybe they're not the tricks that score as well. So right now, he's going to do the stuff that makes him feel good. You know, oh, backflip, bar spin, a tuck, no hander. He wins so much out here. He's got to start practicing those victory laps, holding that tuck, no hander on the cannon. Let's just take a minute to savor the style <laughs> that is Brandon Semenuk. There we go, bar spin onto that cabin. Oh, flat drop one foot again down. <laughs> He's so casual with these tricks that most riders spend all year just trying to nail for their run. And on the whale tail. Oh, classic 360 bar spin to a little goon air on purpose yeah. and skidding <laughs> through the arches. Oh, look at that. They're already spraying him oh, right now. Deja vu for Brandon. Brandon Salmonuk. All the pressure was on him last year. He had the weight of a thousand men on his shoulders last year, and he came out and did the first thing, first time anything, anyone has ever won a joyride three times. He did that last year. He's just secured his fourth win, but he's also got back to back to back wins and his seventh podium. Wow! Let's send it downstairs to Tina Dixon, standing by with the champ. And Brandon, it has not been the easiest year for you. You started out in Rotorua with that crash and then not getting the run that you wanted and laid us out. But to finish off this way with your fourth joyride win, what does this mean to you? Oh, it's like, like a complete redemption for the bad season I had at the start of the year. So, so happy. Yeah. When did you start to feel it on this course? When did things start to click? I honestly like felt really good in practice and I felt good in practice in all the other events too. It's just, I, I don't even know, I just, I needed that run. You needed that run, and how much did experience at uh, the other events, competing at all the other joy rides, pay off for you today? Uh, I don't think you can ever have too much experience here. It's just like so, so stressful, and so many people, and you just wanna perform and put on a good show, so I think I've, I've done it before, but it's still hard every time. Well, you did it again today, congratulations. Guys. Oh, wow. Uh, that's a, the consummate professional that is Brandon Semenuk, and he's just, he has done it yet again, Cam. I can't even believe it that he has done it. Seven podiums. He also completes the three-peat and four joyride wins, and this is how it stacks up. Tommy G going to get on the podium again, just like the win he got in 2012, and Nikolai Rogakin has done it. He's climbed on his first podium ever at joyride in that second spot, and Brandon Semenuk, what do you say about him, Cam? Well, man, the guy <laughs> works so hard. It's not like he does. only experience on this hill. It's every day when he wakes up and he does all these tricks. And it all comes to fruition when he drops in on this course in front of this crowd. And, you know, we talk about how, you know, he tries so hard and he practices so hard and he puts so much time into doing what he does. And if you haven't seen his new video part in Unreal, please check that out. And you can see just how hard this guy works. Why don't we take a look and show just how hard he works to take the win. This check it winning out. run was a work of art. The oppo truck off, 360 downside whip on the up box, the flip double whip. And tricking absolutely every feature, getting the bar spin out of that shark fin. Of course, his trademark movie has been using to win, the Cork 720, and a new one, a backflip tail to one-footed can. He unveiled that in his new movie, Revel in the Chaos, and everybody was wondering, would he bring it to the course? Another trick there, the backflip bar spin on the cannon. That's straight from his movie onto the course. Double tail up on the hip, making it look too easy. That looks like a filler trick, but it's a double tail up. Getting the 360 double bar spin, another casual looking trick. Of course, the flat drop flip off the cabin. Bar spinning into the snail berm, just carrying on how he doesn't miss any obstacle. 
bar spin in. Looked like that might have been an opposite bar spin in. And then, of course, it looks like he exploded into that Fork 720. It looked kind of yeah. like how he did last year, but maybe just with 365 days of refinement. Well, you said the fast rotation he had on that, the way he kind of whipped that around, too. And I like also what Paul Rackhead Judge said. They look at you to trick everything. And on the shark fin, you see him trick the shark fin. You see him tricking every opportunity there was to put a trick in. Brandon Semenuk put a trick in. Let's take a look at our FMB leaderboard right now and how it's playing out. So with Tommy G getting that uh, third place, that means he bumps to the top leaderboard with 3,300 points right there. Brett Reeder will be bumped down to that second spot. Nikolai Rogakin still stays in that third spot because that is where he is. Logan Pete in the fourth, Sam Pilgrim in the fifth. That's your top five in the FMB Diamond Series standings. Well, what an amazing competition, man. You know, I'm happy to think, I think I'm just happy for all of the riders for coming away. No one got seriously injured out of this thing. Yeah, we saw, you know, Tom get shaken up pretty hard, but coming away clean with uh, ma no major injuries, it's a good thing, and it's a good day when that happens. That's how it is. You prioritize. You want to land your run and then care about what place you get after. All right, it's time to hand out the hardware and the awards here. Let's get started for your Red Bull Joyride Awards. Watching us on Red Bull TV. In third place, claiming yet another podium from his 2012 win from Belgium. Put your hands together for Tommy G. Thomas Genon. And there's Tommy G making his way to that third spot. One more time. Get loud for Tommy G, huh? I mean, you've had two podiums at Joyride. How sweet does it feel to get back on the podium, Ken? Oh, man, your second podium always feels better because you always doubt yourself. You say, oh, I've been on that podium. Can I do it again? Thomas Shannon was standing on the top step in 2012, two years where he didn't touch a thing, and now he's back on there knowing that he's doing exactly what he needs to do. Well, you realize just how hard it is. In second place, getting his first ever Joyride podium. That's right, from the U.S. Let's get loud for Nikolai Rogetkin. And how does Nikolai feel right now, Cam? I mean, this is his first ever podium. How did you feel when you got your first ever podium in second place? It's gotta be amazing for him. I mean, he came out here a couple years ago not having any clue what to expect. He was only in the best trick contest, and he had so many tricks, but the ability to put together a whole run wasn't there yet. He's been working so hard on getting the whole package, and he is just an animal on the slope style course these days. There you go, you see him in second place at Joyride. And, and it's only taken him two years to do it. That's some fast turnaround, all right. Time to crown your champ. This is going to take a second. Your Red Bull Joyride champion, making it four Joyride wins and actually completing the three-peat and his seventh podium at Joyride, the local boy, get loud, get proud. Mucho respect for Brandon Seminar. Brandon Seminuk, his fourth win, his fourth joyride win, and competing the three-peat. It's hard enough to try and win this thing back-to-back, -back, but that's a three-peat for the man right there, Brandon Seminuk. So congratulations are in order. Let's hear it for all the boys. Tommy G in third, Nikolai Rogatkin claiming second, and Brandon Seminuk with yet another win. Oh, now it is time for the bubbly bath. As we take a look at uh, <laughs> the beautiful sights out here in Whistler. But, I mean, Cam, how how excited is Nikolai Rogakin to get on the podium uh, this in his first ever podium here at Joyride? It's the place where he first saw Slopestyle in person. And then after a few years of tasting so many podiums, you know that one last thing on his mind is he wants to stand on this one. This is the one that means the most. Well, I'll tell you what, for the first ever, you know, Crankworks has uh, stepped things up into a world tour, meaning three stops. That's right. We started things out, Crankworks, uh, Rotorua, and then it was Crankworks in Les Des Alpes, France, and then it, it was off here to the final one, Red Bull Joyride here in Whistler. And it's the overall standings, your overall slope style championship, your standings, and that means Brett Reeder 
with those two big wins is going to take the title for your Crankworks Slope Style Championship standings right there. Brett Reeder taking the number one spot. Brandon Semenuk, well, he's going to move up in that number two with the win out here. And Tommy G is going to ran things out in, in third. And Nikolai Rukakin having another good year in that four spot with Logan Pete five, Sam Reynolds six, Nomas Limoyne in that seven spot, and Sam Pilgrim eight. So, Hey, just showing up on that list in the top eight, that's big stuff, man. Oh, that's huge for sure. And it is actually crazy when you're looking at that list to think that Brandon didn't even complete a run in New Zealand. He had that second place in France and the win here and still managing to get into that second place spot. And it shows you also, it also shows you how many points you can get. So it is time to crown our world tour champion here for the 2015 season. That is our next award to hand out for you. All right, and it is time to bring him up to the podium. He is going to take the win, the overall series win here on your Crankworks World Tour. Put your hands together, do it for Trek C3. It is Brett Reader. Yeah, he may not be the happiest after what happened today, but he can rest assured he's had an amazing year no matter what in finding himself on top of the podium for the Crankworks World Tour in slope style. You know what, Brad? At least he can breathe now. Brett, take a big old <laughs> breath. It's over, man. I think he just did. Look at the size of that check right there. Those two wins meaning so much for him in New Zealand and France. Now letting him celebrate. And make sure you stay with us later on here at Grant Crooks. we got one more event. Canadian Open, presented by IXS, is coming up here, our final event here at Grant Crooks. So make sure you, you tune back in for that one. Well, I'll tell you what, there is only one more diamond stop on the FMB Diamond Series, and that's going to be Red Bull Rampage. And you'll be able to watch that on Red Bull TV as well. And if you want to know what that's all about, this is Red Bull Rampage. Check it. <laughs> you definitely don't want to miss out. That's going to be the 10th uh, tenth version of Red Bull Rampage coming in. And I'll tell you what, if you missed anything here on Red Bull TV, make sure you uh, go back on the Red Bull TV. You can check out the event analyzer. You can watch all, all the uh, runs from Red Bull Joyride out here. So that has been an amazing time indeed. Thanks for everyone for joining us out here. Make sure you get them hashtags always flowing. Joyride 2015 Crankworks and, of course, Red Bull TV. Check the event analyzer. You want to go analyze and be a judge at home and see if you could judge the correct runs? Well, you can do that on the event analyzer. Tell you what, on behalf of our entire Crankworks crew, thanks for coming out. Thanks for watching us on Red Bull TV. It was an amazing experience all the way around. We saw some crashes, we saw some good stuff, and we saw some guys get on the pony. On behalf of Tina Dixon down there in the mix, Adam Bernard, and of course, partner in crime, Cam McCall. I'm Brad J. Good night now from Whistler.